Welcome to another podcast about geek culture in a medium already saturated with everything nerds love and crave. It's the Lunatic Parade Podcast. Fuck this, let's do it! Do it! Day two! <laughs> I was just listening to that, so... All good, dude. All it's good. It's stuck on my brain. One more time. All right. And we're... And we're rolling. I'm here with Stormy. Hi, guys. Trent. Hello. Bob. How we doing today? And I'm Kurt. This is First Table Gaming's Lunatic Parade Podcast. And today, well, first, I can't wait. I've been dying all week to talk about the new Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Far From Home. Like... That that was so much fun. I, I was concerned about like this is the first post Endgame movie, right, right, and you know where they go from there. Like, is this brand new direction? Like, what happens here? And they they right. did it so perfectly. Let's make sure before we go any further with this though. Spoilers. Yeah, I'm sure Lots we're, 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 we're going to screw this up. For There's somebody. going to be spoilers. So if you haven't seen this yet, stop listening to our podcast and immediately go to the first movie theater that you can find. And go see this film. Then yeah. come back and listen to the rest of the podcast. And then shame on you, you for <laughs> not seeing the movie. <laughs> You've been shamed by Stormy. Look out. <clears throat> well, movie ticket prices are tough, man. Some people are just ripping it on their, file, what they call, jailbroke fire stick or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So I mean, they're I watching a shitty copy. And you know what? You deserve to watch that shitty copy because you should really see this in the theater. I thought even the 2D version that, that I saw was like, I think you could tell, like, oh, man, if this was in 3D, that would have been fucking bananas. Right. Like, some of the effects in there, like the elementals and uh, holy shit, like, this was cool. And uh, Mysterio's always been one of those villains that I forget about until he shows up in comics, and I'm like, that was fucking rad. But... The idea of doing this before it would rely on dumb, like, you knew that nobody would be fucking fooled. Right. Do you know what I mean? Not really like, ha, ah, I got you, Spider-Man, it's all smoke and mirrors, ha <laughs> ha. But, like, the way they've done it makes so much sense, and it's horrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, in this day and age where you're looking, did anybody see that uh, Jim Carrey thing they did over The Shining? I have not. I've seen not. No. Jesus yeah. Christ. I heard like, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it, and, and this day and age where they're able to just, they just snatch your identity and make put you in a porno or a fucking whatever. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> a, a villain like Mysterio. It's, it's very, very, it's already, it's already fucking happening. 30 you seconds know? in, we're already back to porn. How did that happen? It always is going to happen. Well, that is the issue with this, what they call it. I mean, where they're taking celebrities and you, they're like, I never did porn, but it, it's hard to argue with the footage. You're like, right. that looks just like you. Yeah. You know? you know what? Everybody's done porn. I don't know one person who has not taken a picture of themselves and sent it to somebody else. That is a form of porn. I, can I shake your hand? <laughs> I've never done it. Really? Are oh, fuck no. Serious? Wow. No. I've never even measured my dick. No dick pics from Curtis, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> fuck no. Well, you know what? You and your wife got married very early on, though, before technology was rampant in, in our well, lives. Well, we met so, on the know. internet. Yeah, I know. Exactly. But what I mean... So that know. that should tell you that, like, I'm kind of committed to this stance. Like, that could have happened at any time, and I was like, you know, I'm not doing this. Uh, let's just say... Not all of me has stage presence, but I I do have like probably some insecurities at work that way. <laughs> Not all of me has stage presence. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> um, there's, there's the line for the day. Exactly. Let's get back to uh, Spider Man Three and away from or Spider Man Far From Home and away from porn for a minute. Um, Honestly, I was kind of hoping we'd see who the next villain was, the next villain arc. I agree, yes. and like I was, I will, I was a little disappointed with the fact that, I mean, we still don't know if, but like again, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. We still don't know if Mysterio actually died at the end because everything from him is a fucking illusion. Yeah. So we don't know that, but if they got rid of him, it's, I'm going to be really upset because I thought that was a brilliant take on that villain. Like they took the idea of a guy who's a special effects master who uses those things in smoke and mirrors to fuck with Spider-Man and modernized it to a point that made it believable mm-hmm. because the shit they can do with drones now is insane. And like, if you could do a, if you could fi- figure out a way to put a, holog- a holographic projection mechanism onto a drone, you could create 
false environments like that and Absolutely. create things that would look fucking real. And like they did a great job with that, dude. And like I was very happy with like the fact that they had the smoky fishbowl. I was like, hallelujah. That made me really happy because I, I was afraid they were going to let. I knew we saw it a little bit in the trailer, but they had that motherfucker was in there all over the place, dude. He had that fucking fishbowl with the fucking. And it mist. looked really it cool. Looks that, so good. That costume is a potential to look really fucking dumb. But that yeah. thing looked bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, they 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 succeeded like they did in Aquaman. You know, they took a goofy costume and made it look fucking awesome. You know, like but um yeah, no, I thought the movie was wonderful. I thought it was great. One thing I really liked about the film, and and I'll I'd like to hear what you guys your guys' opinion is on this too, is that Kevin Smith talked about this in his review of it. And it felt like a fucking high school movie. Yeah, you know, it and, did. And, and Kevin Smith made a very good point, and I love this point. Uh, he said, "You know, he's like, if if you come from a creative frame of mind, you know something is good when you see it and you want to go make it." And he's yeah. like, "I went and saw that movie," and he's like, "The first thing I want to do is go make a movie about high school." He's like, you know, because I don't have the talent to make a superhero movie, but I, I want to go make a high school movie because it really was a high school movie. You know what I mean? It yeah. was they're on see, they're on their fucking sophomore trip. He's trying to get with the girl. Like actually, it, was, it did seem like a Kevin Smith movie. It, it was very much so. You know, there was a Do lot. You know what I mean, humor like it, it really did in that way. There was a lot of great humor. I love the arc with fucking uh, his friend, the, the guy in the chair, and the girl who become boyfriend and girlfriend on the airplane, and like you know they break up at the end of the trip. It was just fucking fantastic. I love that whole piece and right. like the whole thing with him and MJ was great and like if you took all the superhero elements out of that film it's still a pretty good fucking you know, like coming it of is. age teenager movie you know what I mean it was a decent film you know I don't know what do you guys think I loved it and it was it brought up a lot of the first thing I want to point out which is kind of off topic is and I want to point this out because I think more porn no <laughs> we'll get back to porn <laughs> we always come back to porn is in no way am I saying that MJ is unattractive. No way, shape, or form. So don't quote me on saying I am. But MJ is not your typical female leading role. She doesn't have, She's not blonde. She doesn't have big tits. And I think that is a huge issue, image issue, with girls nowadays. They see someone on film and they're like, oh, I want to go do that. And you have 16-year-old girls out there who want fake boobs because they want to look like so-and-so on film. So I commend Marvel for that. Like... 100 percent i agree she is not she's a non-traditional beauty exactly she's a very beautiful girl but she's tall she's lanky she's kind of geeky you know what i mean she's not big breasted she doesn't have a big ass she's not super skinny you know what i mean she's she looks right. like an average fucking teenager you know what i mean right and she definitely doesn't fit the mold of the, uh, the typical mary jane the, the right the, but that's that's the, what i have an issue yeah. with see you don't like that see i didn't know like i don't like that because the point of mary jane is it's literally supposed to be the dynamic is Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. Right. The, Peter with MJ is one of those things where every single person outside of his circle looks at it and goes, "How did he get her?" Right. Absolutely. And that's that's not it. Like I I, I like this character. I I think she's great. Um, but I don't understand why they cast her as MJ or why. Why didn't you just come up with another character? That's clearly not MJ. Well, I think what they were attempting to do was take it away so much of... Because really, they took away the idea of Peter being infatuated with MJ. Because MJ was infatuated with Peter first. If you watch Homecoming, yeah. Yeah. she's infatuated with him. You know what I mean? So it's like it's kind of like she's into him. Then he kind of figures it out. And it's like, wait, this girl's really smart, really cool, and really funny. And like I dig her. So I think they're going with a different route with that. And I, I understand the purist. I, I get that. You know, because to me, yes, Mary Jane is a redhead. She's white skin, red hair. You know what I mean? Like voluptuous. Right. I didn't take gorgeous, it to like issue woman. that it was a person no, of color. No, but, but I mean like, she, like that, okay, no. yeah. And she, she's just typically this, she's the prom queen. Right. You know what I mean? Is, is what you think of. And like how did the nerdy kid get with the prom queen? So I get that but i i don't have a problem because i i like the dynamic between them two i like the fact that they made her a little more nerdy i like the fact that you know she's different i i i, I think it's good because i agree with everything you're saying you know i like the idea that they're it's important yeah because kids nowadays have no concept of themselves they are trying to be someone else and they end up getting having a lot of medical issues because of it yeah I agree 100%, and it's nice to see that. 
you know, but I can definitely see your side of that argument as well, you know, but for right. me, it, me, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't ruin the movie at all for me. I'm just, I'm just pointing that out. Right, like, yeah. I'm not a person that watches these movies and expect right. them to be a hundred percent like legit, like the comics. I'm watching them enjoying these movies right. for what they are. I don't even care that they changed uh, Aunt May from uh, an old spinster yeah, you know, to, to like she's cobwebs in yeah. her of granny panties to like the one of the hottest women in movie history. Yeah, Marissa Tomei, holy right. moly, like that's that's a one eighty. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah, one hundred percent. And it, it works. This works. Yeah, it's, it's fun to watch. I like her as Aunt May. Yeah. And Flash wasn't, you know, what did he said. That's an. Oh yeah, there's yeah. no way. Yeah, that's but, not Flash. Flash was a big job. But I do like I mean? it these days though. Like I, I, I don't. I've been in high school in thirty years. I don't get these kids. Right. This is no longer the world that we grew up in, too. Yeah. Back when we were kids, nerds were nerds. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew that they were going to fucking run the world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. We all we all grew up with a different Flash Thompson. Yeah. In today's world, maybe that is the Flash Thompson. Right. It's the rich kid. It's the entitled rich kid. And, you know, right. Who's also of, brainy. Right. And you know that he's going to take the ball and run with it, whatever they said. Right. About, and he'll probably be richer than his parents. And I thought it was great, too, at the end of that movie when they land in New York, when they land in Newark. Fucking everybody comes up and he comes up to his butler. He's like, mother couldn't make it again. <laughs> you know? Right. I was like, they just pointed out like a great thing because he kind of had this sad look on his face. And I'm like, to show that his life isn't all that great either even though he pretends like it is you know what i mean like so i I think they were addressing some social norms and i I agree with you and i I don't have a problem with that because we need to see changes like that in movies you know we need to see changes in the people we hold up to be role models and the people that you know we we show like heroines the actual mj in the comic book it's not that she was dumb but she wasn't like brainy no not at all that's so important is to put the brainy chick in the movie. Yeah, exactly. You like, know? I do like the fact that, like, the entire group of friends surrounding Spider-Man in this all seem to be nerds. They're all nerdy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All of them are. They're all smart. They're all part of the debate team. They're on a science They're on a science club trip. Like, right. all of them are on a science club trip, dude. You know what I mean? Like, and I like, like you say, there was a very vast, there was a, a very, um, a, a different representation in that whole group of people. You know what I mean? You had Peter, who, even though he's, like, kind of tiny, Still doesn't look much like a nerd. You know what I mean? He's kind of, right. you know, Kid Peter looks like he's the short kid. You know, he ran track, didn't play football. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. to, to interrupt you for a minute, you can't put what someone looks like as a nerd. True. Very because true. Because I don't know how to say this, but you can't look at someone and because they look the way they do, they're a nerd. That's true, and and I think that that addresses a lot of what Kurt's Terry saying. Terry Crews is a good point. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back, back in our day, though, back when we all went to school, you could. It was very distinctive the differences. You know what I mean? Like your jock looked right. like your jock. Your nerds were the ones that didn't fit in anywhere. We were the misfits. You know what I mean? There was a differentiation. Whereas now you don't see it as much, and I no. agree. You know, I I talk about it all the time when I watch my LCS shit that I watch the European League of Legends. Man, like there's guys on that team that play video games for a living that you look at and you're like, why are you not like a fucking, you know, a face model right. in some for- fucking catalog somewhere? You know what I mean? Like big muscular buff built dude sitting down playing video games Is for a living. Is it Caps, you know? the blonde guy for Fnatic? No, that's Broxa. Brox. The, 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 he looks like a freaking football player. I know. Broxa looks like, he looks like he's about to go play like linebacker for the fucking, you know, for the Cleveland Browns. Really? He's, he's like, click, click. I killed you with my little spike. I mean, I don't dig blondes, you know? but for a blonde, he's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It you got to figure us growing up, we were not. We, we also were not the atypical uh, nerds. No, because you was in wrestling. Yeah, I looked like I could start on any high school football team. You looked like you already had a job and a mortgage when you were in high school. <laughs> I was born with a job and a mortgage. I was the grumpy old man from, from right. day one. The only atypical nerds were Randy and Tim. Yeah, exactly. And and like and Tim even wasn't really. Tim was Tim was just Tim. You know what I mean? Tim always he was Primus sucks T shirt and purple hair and all the girls loved them you know what i mean but yeah i mean when, when i refer to nerds in school i'm referring more to the outcasts okay you know what i mean not okay. necessarily not the revenge of the nerd nerds but outcasts the people that didn't fit anywhere else you know um but yeah i agree we don't see that as much anymore you know what i mean it's now joe man janella that guy's a fucking adonis man he's nerdy as fuck you know what i mean like <laughs> he's a fucking total nerd that guy plays D every goddamn weekend you know what i mean like and he's a heartthrob yeah like, right exactly he is. Heartthrob. 
And look at Van Diesel. Yeah, Vin Diesel's another one, you know? Yeah, that was the thing you just didn't see before. Yeah. Well, it, it got to a point where people just don't care anymore. You know, they're like, yeah, I like nerdy shit. There's nothing fucking wrong with it. Right. You know what I mean? The stigma has really come off of that, you know, which is leads into like the very first episode we did. We talked a lot about the resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons. And I think that plays a lot into it because for so long, gaming, playing video games, playing tabletop games, playing role playing games got lumped into that outcast nerd culture. Well, now that that culture has become very socially acceptable, those things that are a product of that become socially acceptable. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's yeah. because people don't care anymore, and they're like, they they know nerds rule the fucking world. Dude, the smart kids are the ones that make all the fucking money. They're the ones that do everything. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, don't piss off the fucking nerds. Exactly. Don't do that, dude. Because you It was your job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One day they'll fire you. you know? <laughs> remember, remember when you shoved me in a toilet in high school? Yeah, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to feel good. Exactly, man. You know, that's got to be awesome. You know. But back to the movie, man. Like, I thought it was awesome. I thought the action in it was great. I really loved, and talking about the 3D scenes, Mm -hmm. I think, I didn't see it in 3D either. We saw it in 2D because I can't watch 3D movies. Um, They make my, it does something with my eyes because of my glasses. Like, I just can't do it. It gives me horrible headaches. But um, I think the whole scene where Mysterio is fucking with Spider-Man when he's trying to find out who he told. That whole scene in 3D would have been mind blowing. It was actually pretty frightening too. They did a good job of like, oh, I know, I'm actually kind of fry. I'm on the edge yeah. of my seat here. This is fucking cool. It reminded me a lot of Scarecrow. Is what it reminded yeah. me of, like Scarecrow from the Batman games, yeah. like fucking with their head, dude. You know, like which was great, you know. And I thought that was really well done. I thought that was awesome. And the fact that he had him so disoriented that he gets hit by a fucking monorail, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, sorry, and you're like, oh shit! Like I didn't even see that coming, dude. Like <laughs> his Peter Tingle was off. Yeah, his Peter Tingle was very yeah. off. The Peter Tingle joke got on my nerves a little bit <laughs> after a while, but I, I got it. I hear you. You're making a. It's a ma- high school movie. It's a. PG-13 dick joke. It's going to play to that crowd very well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or even that. Like, I know a lot of people um, who are very, very, um, you know, uh, what, Bible thumpers. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't find a, a better way to put that. But they, they, they people are People who believe in zombies. <laughs> well, yeah. They, it's a grown person with a boogeyman under their bed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they want their kids to watch you know a certain type of movie and they've eschewed these movies uh, because they they think they're garbage right and to a certain point yeah there there is an element of that where they don't they don't want to take their kids to see that movie because they're they're swearing all throughout these comic book movies yeah yeah exactly and because in part they have aimed them I don't know if it's because they've aimed them at adults or. Society's moved on. We're like it's swear words. Like get over. Yeah, it. I know. I think we're finally like getting if you. That. You know what I mean? If you're literally offended by a four letter word, yeah, fucking fuck off out of my life. Do like, not come anywhere near Stormy because I cuss like fucking sailor. Oh yeah, dude, exactly. Yeah, this well, house is a a swear free zone. I mean, <laughs> an extra do swearing think? zone. Do you think it's because? Uh, Th- these movies are aimed at older people, or they've just realized that our our social mores have... Is it mores? Are those mores? I'm using a word I don't know what it is. I think it's mores. But culturally, we've moved on where we're like, I'm not as offended by that. But there's a whole group of people that are staying back in this, you know, rigid 1950s sensibility where like, he said a swear word. Like, I don't know. You know, I think they're, it's they're retar- still, Oh, Go ahead. They're, they're, they're still just colorful metaphors. Right. No matter how you look at it. You know, it's... Nobody got that reference. Okay. <laughs> I don't think... No, I didn't get the reference. I didn't get the reference. Go ahead, honey. I don't think it's okay to tell a child that or a teenager, whoever it may be, because I was only allowed to go see Disney movies until I was in the 10th grade when Titanic came out. And the only reason why I could see Titanic was because I got extra credit in my AP history class for it. <laughs> But I think it's retarded when seeing tits and raping and whatever else on primetime TV, but somebody says a freaking cuss word and everybody freaks out. It's fucking retarded. Like, I have no problem with the word, with with seeing breasts or nudity. I think, what the fuck ever. But I agree with you 100%. Like, we let people, we let kids watch 
like on abhorrent violence and like gang rape and murder and serial murder and we're like hey that's cool it's fucking Friday it's Friday Night TV TJIF on that one but you know somebody says the word fuck cunt pussy dick cock and it's a fucking problem you know what I mean it's ridiculous but I do think though things have lightened up to to address what you were your question I think I think it's social. I think the so, culturally we're we're lightening up because like even when we watch like Ink Master, yeah. you watch like Ink Master, dude. They say shit. They say bitch. They say pussy. They say dick. All that stuff is said. The only word they really black out anymore is fuck. And I don't think they would let anybody say cunt. Like I don't think those two would happen. We just don't say that word in this society. Well, I think a lot of it is. I think people find those two words extremely offensive. Yeah. I think that's the problem. It's the, the other, last two. They do have a lot of punch, man. Well, in, yeah. In the right place, it feels really good to say it. Well, if you also think about it too, I mean, the rest of them are very descriptive. You know what I mean? It's it's colorful metaphors. It's you know, that guy's being a dick. You know what I mean? Or shit. That I can't believe that happened. Right. Damn it. You know what I mean? But fuck and fuck you. And you're being a cunt have two very different connotations than the rest of those words. Yeah. And I think people just inherently get offended, like get, become defensive about it and become offended about it. I think on top of it, too, that a parent doesn't want to be embarrassed when they're out with their eight year old. And it's like, you're being a cunt, mom. I don't think they want that to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so they're like, hey, I don't want to. You know, see that two shit. of my favorite words are holy fuck and Jesus fuck. Yeah, I know. So are the seven words still banned on TV? Yes, as far as well, no, I don't think they're all still banned anymore. Shit, it's, piss, cunt, motherfucker, tits, and it, cocksucker. It was shit, piss, cunt, motherfucker, tits, tits cocksucker, cocksucker. <laughs> we can't. Let's play so the you can't game. say tits? Yeah, we said motherfucker, but I, I thought fuck was in there too. Shit, piss, cunt, fuck, cocksucker, motherfucker. Is what I thought it was. Shit, piss, cunt. It's <laughs> anyway. fucking. It's George Carlin. Right. He talks about the seven words you can't say on TV. I think most of them, most of those, still are. Uh, but no, you can still say piss. You can say piss. And they a lot of a lot of shows. If it's on after nine p.m., they'll say shit. Like they let shits through all the time on fucking Ink Master. Yeah. You know. Um, so I think it is lightening up a little bit. I, I I think that's what's happening. I don't think. I think it's it's people are starting to just go what the fuck you know what I mean whatever <laughs> you know, they're just like it's fucking stupid I mean these kids hear this shit you know, we we all we since like you brought up the fifties all of us grew up in a time period where we learned where kids talked like that in school in the fifties and sixties kids didn't talk like that in school in the seventies and eighties and nineties kids sure as fuck talked like that in school so it's like you know all that shit before I went fucking- to Catholic school I did not say those words. You went, did not say them, but I bet you you heard them. Oh, I sure as exactly. Did. So what's the point of being afraid of them in a fucking TV show? Because they're just going to hear them somewhere else, anyways. Right. So the color from Mother Four was a reference to Star Trek Far uh, when Spock came for, back to pick up. Oh the yeah, well, a double dumbass on you, right? Right. No, yeah. Like like they came back to pick up the whales and Spock didn't know what the swear words were, so he called them color from metaphors. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a deep dive that I totally missed, dude. It's all right. I haven't watched Star Trek four in like fucking thirty years. So. It, it doesn't hold up well. Yeah, none of the, it started dude, to thin out with that one. Star for sure. Trek one doesn't even hold up that well for me anymore, dude. I mean, it's good, oh, dude. It's yeah. cool, and I like the idea of, of Voyager and Voyager and all that shit. But, dude, they're pretty badly made films. <laughs> you know, like that was one of a few movies that my dad took me to that he was like fucking mad at me on the ride home. <laughs> Like, you're like, like I put him through something. Like right. if I can sit through that. Right. Exactly. Now I have a I have something I want to ask you guys. Bigger than a baby's and, arm. <laughs> you always say that. <laughs> Anytime 42. I ask him, something bigger than a baby's arm. It, it's it's a reference to pump up the volume with Christian Slater. That's where okay, that comes from. Okay. So in today's culture, everybody is trying to live up to somebody else. Now, what do you think about how they tied that into with Iron Man and Spider Man? How he was trying, he got, he went, he was crushed because he didn't think he could live up to him. I see what you're asking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, I, I liked what they did with it. I liked what they did with it because, like. I think Peter Parker would be the next Iron Man. He yeah. is the next Tony Stark, not the next Iron Man, but the next Tony Stark. I mean, he's a brilliant, he's a brilliant kid yeah. who is a little bit crazy, and like, like that sequence. Like, I love the part in that movie with Happy when he's like, you know, I need a suit. I don't have a suit. And he's like, oh, you need a suit. And he opens up the lab in the back, and Peter goes back in there, and he's like, he's looking through the holograph stuff, and he grabs a hold of something and pulls it out. And he's like, okay, well, do this. And he's like, and, and upgrade. All right, do this with the web shooters, but upgrade the uh, the percentage. Upgrade the electric. 
electrical percentage up to 25% output and then do this and Happy just gets a smile on his face because it looks like fucking Tony Stark yeah. standing there talking to Jarvis to build one of the suits. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, So there was a great moment there where they're doing that. I also think it's a little bit of Marvel and I know this was a Sony picture because Spider-Man is still a Sony property technically and they do it in conjunction with Marvel but I think Marvel is also kind of banking on Tom's Ho- Tom Holland and Spider-Man kind of being the Iron Man of Phase 4. He was yeah. introduced towards the oh, end of Phase 3. Yeah. And he's going to be the one that's going to show up in all the films in Phase 4, just like Tony Stark That did. makes complete sense. You know what well, I mean? I tell yeah. you, I like the, this movie. I thought, okay, they, they wrapped everything up with Endgame, and where does this go? No. This wasn't... They didn't just pull... Uh, Mysterio out of their ass, they were able to draw this thread where they go, we were setting you up for this in this movie and that movie. Right. Movie. I like that organic feel. Like, yeah. Like, it wasn't clunky. Like, it felt like, oh, this is just the next stream of this story. You right. Know? But back to your point, yeah, I, I, I think that's absolutely important. I think uh, these days we were talking about celebrity last uh, week and like how the fuck did fame become so important mm-hmm. like how did it become more important than what you do right you know what i mean yeah and uh yeah that touched on that and i i, I hope that inspires a whole bunch of kids to choose your your heroes carefully right you know yeah. Right, exactly. No, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was. I thought, and it makes sense to me. And I love. I don't care. What everybody says. I know Spider Man's done a million times, and everybody's like, "There's certain people that don't like Tom Holland as Spider Man." This kid is Spider Man to me. I mean, Tobey Maguire was great. I liked Andrew Garfield as well. Yeah. But Tom Holland is the Spider Man. When I think of Spider Man, I think of a 16 year old kid. That's what I think of in my head. Yeah. And it's like. They really did a good job of keeping him 16 years old and this young kid in high school for, you know, through Civil War and the Avenger films and then the, the two Spider-Man films. And and I like that. You know what I mean? It's to me, Tom Holland is Spider-Man. It's just that's just for me, he is. And I think it's great. And I, I hope they do hand the torch off to him because I think he can carry that because he plays the role beautifully. And His, I had no idea because it was my one gripe about the first one, kind of. But I mean, I realize he's in high school, so it's probably not going to happen but I was just like how is there a Spider-Man movie and there's no J. Jonah Jameson oh dude <laughs> and then I didn't know that he would make an appearance yeah and the, the way that they introduced him at the end which Leo had an interesting point that end scene did that happen or was that Mysterio what do you mean the uh, the whole scene at the end yeah, did everybody else see that, or did just Peter see that? Yeah, I don't know. It could have been the drones. We were talking about that, how maybe Mysterio didn't die. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it could very yeah. well be possible. I mean, that still could just be a mind fuck. Yeah, that's the beauty of that yeah. character. And like I was telling her whenever we, we came home from that, I was saying, I think I think Sony and Marvel made a really smart choice there because they're like, we're going to do this character, we're going to do it this way, we're going to end it this way because. If the people love Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, he didn't die. We could bring him back at any point. Yeah. If they didn't like him, he's gone, he's dead, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. But see, he played it very well. Oh, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal he was fucking the park. awesome. Like, the the first half of that movie, I'm watching it, and I'm like, are they really going to make Mysterio a good guy? Is this, like, really a Mysterio from a different planet who happens to be the hero? Like, is that what's going on? And then the scene happened in the bar when he handed it over, and he's like, that was so easy! And I'm like, oh, my God, that was fucking great, dude. Like, the switch of his character from that fucking... Mysterio, the, the, right? the fucking soldier there. to the fucking ha <laughs> ha! You right. know what I mean? Like, it was fucking awesome, dude. Like, I love... Jake Jim Hall is one of my favorite actors on the planet. I've loved that guy ever since I saw uh, Bubble Boy, which is one of my favorite movies ever. I... I don't know anybody that's ever said that. That's pretty awesome. Have you ever seen Bubble Boy? No. Dude, that movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. Jake Gyllenhaal plays a guy who his mom has kept... He's like boy in the bubble. He has one of those immune diseases where he can't fucking be in public or anything. And he meets his neighbor next door and he falls for her. And she leaves. So he decides to go find her. So he builds himself a little bubble 
that he can walk in with arms and shit. And it's about his adventure going to Niagara Falls to try to get to get the girl back. And it's fucking hysterical, dude. He ends up with like a group of fucking cultists at one point. Um, at one point, he meets like his his birth mother, because he finds out he was adopted, and she's like some kind of biker that's like a, who's like the old lady of Danny Trio. Like it's fucking great, dude. It is so, so that movie. Edibles plus this movie. Yeah, yeah dude, it's gold. fucking right. hilarious. And and Jake Gyllenhaal's like a kid, dude. I mean, he's and he's just dorky as fuck in it, and it's it's great. I love that movie. And then Donnie Darko, obviously, yeah. like that movie was spectacular. But um, no, I loved him in the role. I thought he was great. The way he he portrayed Mysterio, I thought was wonderful because he could Jake Gyllenhaal can play that stoic soldier. You know what I mean? He can he can pull off hero and pull off villain. Uh, and I, and he, I thought he successfully did that in this film beautifully. You was know? that him in Requiem for a Dream? I think he was in that movie too, right? No. That was uh, Jared Leto. Jared Leto. I get them mixed up. Like, that's yeah. actors I get mixed up. Okay. I'm, I'm going to lose nerd cred here, but I still haven't seen Don, Don, Donnie Darko. It's been, like, on every one of my cues. Right. It's like, hey, you'll love this movie because you like all of these, and I still haven't seen the Donnie Darko. I think at this point, like, the hype, it's, you're going to be like, who the, why would I watch this? It's, like, it's, I, I don't think you'll lose nerd cred. That's more of a... It's just kind of a... It's one of those films that did... Very poorly when it came out, yeah. but the cult following is huge on it. It's a sleeper. Film. Yeah, you know, what it's I mean? a great yeah. idea for a story, and it's fucked up, and you will have no idea what the fuck is going on, and you will not know at the end either. Like it's fucking weird. It's just one of those movies, you know what I mean? Right. But it's a great film, and and he was great in it. You know what I mean? Like it was it was a very good movie, very good movie. I definitely do we suggest have it watch here? it. We do not, but I will get it. Guess what, Bob? You All by legal house, means, so I promise. We'll uh, <laughs> sit down and watch it one night. Yes. Okay. Um, so to bring it back full circle. So- Full circle. I hadn't seen Homecoming because I had been so burnt out on Spider Man movies. I haven't watched a Spider Man movie since Tobey Maguire was in it. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm like, they came out so fast and they were, I think they were shit quality. Mm-hmm. I'm like, going, I have no desire to see them. Right. Uh, and it wasn't until Marvel came back out and I saw him in, what was it, for Civil War? Civil War, yeah. Civil War. I'm like, oh, that's not bad. But I still hadn't seen, still, still haven't seen Homecoming. Right. Homecoming. Was really good. I liked a lot of people had. I liked how they. I liked the story behind the vulture. I thought. Whew, I yeah. thought Michael Keaton was spectacular as the vulture. He was amazing. And I liked the idea of how they they tied it into the MCU with instead of him just being this old decrepit guy. You know, he's a fucking. He's a, he's basically a, a like illegal arms dealer who is like basically that like when the shit goes down in New York after Avengers, his team are like collecting all that alien tech, turning them into weapons and selling them to people okay and like his vulture thing is this big like fucking flight suit that he had created so he can get into these fucking containers that are taking all the stuff from new york after the battle to like to the department of i can't remember what it's called but they're they're transporting all those materials and his suit would allow him to like f- like fly land on these trucks go in and get shit and get back out that was the whole point of the suit it was done really well too because it's got like big fucking like in the wing blades and the whole the wings all turn like a like a um, autonomous fucking like armatures and shit like that for him to be able to fly and he wears like a like a, a, a fighter pilot's flight suit so that gives him that bird look you know what I mean with the mask okay. and stuff it was really good it was really well done and I, I liked it I thought it was awesome I, I thought they did a great job with Homecoming um, yeah like particularly I like those villains like that where you watch it and you go well fuck like that could be me yeah absolutely yeah 100% like, you know what I mean like I I I know that guy's a homicidal asshole, <laughs> right? <laughs> at the same time, I see it. You right. know what I mean? There are some comic book villains that are very two dimensional, yeah, or, or just an interpretation of one. Right? You know, we we talked about Joker last week. You could do that totally as a two dimensional character. Oh, absolutely. He's yeah. nuts. That's it. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? But the, I like those stories too, where they they take it one further, and it's if right. You know, uh, character study well, you identify with. What was beautiful about the way they did that with the Vulture too, with Adrian Toomes, it was was that. You know, they were hired. His cleanup crew was hired to clean up the rubble that happened after the Battle of New York. And it's like his his team was hired to do the cleanup there. And then Tony Stark and the Department of and Shield and them, there's a department, I can't remember what it's called, come in. And they're like, no, we're taking this over. And he lost the contract. And he's like, you know, I got a wife, I got kids, I got a house. How do you, you know, I, I can't afford to lose this job. And like, that's what turns him to the life of crime. So it's got that very much that, that depth to him. Like I was pushed here. You know what I mean? And, and why does Stark and the government get to keep all this shit? You know what I mean? We had to survive the battle 
of New York. Why don't we get to use it for our needs too? You know what I mean? So it was, it was great. It was really well done. And Michael Keaton, that guy, he could play a psychopath really fucking well, dude. And like, he's just got that it's sinister charm thing. too. Yeah. To where you're like, you like that guy. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. Shit, he's nuts. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, great. I like that. It was great. I definitely, you'd come over, man, watch it again. Watch it. I have every yep. comic book movie. So, and I like well, that, that Spider Man too. The one with the uh, Electro, like the yeah. way they did Electro. I don't know. I haven't seen it since I was in the theater, but I, I just loved being in the theater. They had the sound perfectly ramped up, right? And how they did everything about Electro, his powers, like the special effects on the screen, and then audio wise, it was just it was a treat. Right. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, like. So how many movies am I behind? Well, okay, so you had the very first three, which were um, the Tobey Maguire films, which were Spider Man, Spider Man Two, and then Spider Man Three, and those were the Tobey Maguire ones. Which the first one was good. Um, I did not. They they. they f- Fucked up Green Goblin. I need. They need to bring Green Goblin back and do it right. I know they got Willem um, Dafoe. You couldn't have picked a better Green Goblin. I know, but, the, like but you couldn't have picked a better Green Goblin. But they made him look like a fucking Power Ranger villain. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's yeah. it's what well, he that's the dumbest like. thing in the world. Yeah. It's like you got you got Willem Dafoe's amazing, expressive, frightening he, face. Yes, and you covered it up. Yeah, yes. exactly. You covered it up in a fucking mask. And then Spider Man Two had Doc Ock, which I think Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, yeah. was a very good film. Like, in my opinion, because you can you can watch that movie, not know anything about the franchise or anything around it, and it's still a great movie. Yeah. You know, Doc Ock, the guy who played, Alfred Molina, who played Doc Ock, was awesome. It was just really well done. And that might be one of the best, like, some of the best comic book fight like sequences like that subway fight right that's pure like lifted from comic books the way Spidey moves his poses the Doc Ox attacks like everything it's right. so perfect I love that yeah it was great and then Spider-Man 3 was awful I mean they just they tried to put too many villains in it Sandman was really cool in the way they made Sandman move around and, and that kind of 100%. stuff 100% why did they awesome. just keep it to that villain yeah and but like, wait technically have you seen Venom no Venom Technically, was really good. Venom is in the Spider-Man Venom? universe. No. It was great. Yeah, you gotta watch that when you love it. The critics bashed it, but fuck the critics. Yeah. I loved it. Venom was really good. And then you fuck had the critics. Then you had uh, after those three, then it waited a couple of years, and then they rebooted the franchise with Andrew Garfield playing Spider-Man, and that was called the Amazing Spider-Man. And they fixed some things because they had him build his web shooters instead of them being in his hands. And and they did the lizard, and they did uh, and the second one they did Electro, and they, they were good. They were very good. But there were things in Maguire's Spider-Man films that were missing, and there were things in the amazing Spider-Man films with Andrew Garfield that were missing, and in the new ones, they got it right. So, like, I mean, as far as modern-day Spider-Man films, there is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them right now. Um, but I consider the Mar- from from uh, Civil War forward the new spot that's spider-man that's the spider-man you know what i mean like it's kind of like you know nolan's batmans even though i love burton's batmans and they will always be my batman because i saw that at the lyric fucking twin cinema downtown in 1989 (laughs) it was a great movie nolan's batmans were better films you know what i mean they they were just they were better comic book films burton's films were very burton's version of a comic book film but like you know uh uh fucking you know nolan's batman films are in my opinion the modern day batman i think they were a good mix of like you could tell that Burton grew up like a lot of us loving the uh, the uh, what the fuck are they the sixties TV show yeah where it's pure campiness right yeah they there's they have that campiness but they also they seem to almost exist in a real world right you know yeah. those characters do and that's the thing with Batman that uh, you know any one of us could be him right. But yeah. nobody's fucking. Yeah, it's amazing. Going to, how, many billi- how many fucking multi billionaires do we have in the world and still no fucking Batman? It's ridiculous. I know, right? It's retarded. Like Jeff Bezos, Wait. if you're fucking listening, become Batman. You got enough money to do it. I, I don't know. The billionaires, the billionaires have failed us. Right. Yes. Well, I don't know who said it. I, I'm going to think it was probably a sports commentator, but there was a uh, CM Punk is a pro wrestler. Yeah. And he, he left that world to become an MMA fighter. Right. And. Uh, somebody was quoted as saying, the thing is, it hurts a lot more to get punched in the face when you're a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do that. Like, you have to have come up through it. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like, if you... That's that's the the part of being a billionaire is... For, I don't even, honestly, I don't know how you, you if become I had, a billionaire. Like, how you become a billionaire? If I had, how is a million not enough? If I had Zuckerberg's fuck you money... 
and I would, and I lost like a hundred pounds, I'd be Batman in a heartbeat. I would so become Batman. You so should. I would totally. We'd never get divorced. Exactly. I would totally become Batman. You know what I mean? Like, if I could afford all the cool toys to go out there and, like, save the fucking innocents, I would in a heartbeat. Either that or I'd build an Iron Man suit, one of the two. Now, could you go through all the athletic training he did? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I might build an Iron Man suit instead. Because but I think, it does it for me. I think that Iron Man touched on that. Like, the first Iron Man movie is, okay, you're a fucking billionaire. And you build a crime fighting suit. Right. Well, guess what? There's you can't just do that. Yeah. First of all, the government's gonna come after you. And yeah. then who are you fighting? And do you end up looking like do you look like a big bully? Or are you a fucking you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Do you become the villain almost immediately? Right. You know, uh, how does that work? Like, mm-hmm. you know, especially like the the notion that Batman is fighting crime. And there's more than a couple of Batman comics that touch on this, in that the real crime is up in City Hall. Right. He can go down on the street and punch people in the face all fucking night, every night of the week. But if it's a low-income area and there aren't any fucking opportunities there, there is no pulling yourself up by the bootstraps yeah. in these fucking areas. No. Yeah. You're fucked, and they prey on each other. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, but yeah, breeds, how do, that kind of stuff, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, so back to Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, we got, we got sidetracked. Oh, yeah. I love the fact of how many tie-ins that they... So, they didn't completely kill the Avengers. When I say kill, they didn't shoot them off dead. I mean, the the movies have ended. The, the glasses that uh, Tony left for <laughs> Spider-Man, what were they called? Edith. Edith. Those were shaped like... Uh, like Iron Man's iconic glasses. Yeah, well, they were his glasses. They were Tony Stark's glasses. And he put what was it? So what? What we didn't know is that for the last two films, why Tony Stark had those on, he had Edith on the whole time. No shit. He, he just none of us knew it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then at the end, in in the battle scene, I think it's with Happy. I'm not quite sure, but they're they're all fighting, and then a garbage can lid rolls down the street, and somebody picks it up, blocks something, <laughs> and says, "Well, it's not good as captains," and no, drops it. It was in the um. No, it was in the uh. It it was in the, the, the vault. The, the, crown, the crown jewels. In the vault. crown jewels vault. The, the the drones are coming after him, and Happy picked up the shield, and he's doing like this, and he tries to throw it and just misses. He's like, I don't know how the hell Cap does that. Oh, <laughs> like, that's yeah, right. yeah. oh in the song. At the very end. Which one? The 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 one. Remember the Avengers movie? It is uh, uh, Iron Man and. Um, Scarlett Johansson. They are coming in when. Um, oh, the ACDC song. Yeah. Yeah. When when Happy's like, uh, he's like, you make the suit, I got the music. Yeah. <laughs> and it kicks into that fucking uh, the the one AC Highway to Hell by ACDC. Yeah. Yeah, I fucking hate that. Yeah. <laughs> that bothers me so fucking. Much. Why? Because like, it's Iron Man. They use. Black Sabbath Iron Man once in this movie. Right. And all of a sudden it's really like, why is this iconic music ACDC? Yeah, I don't like, know. Like, why did they choose that? That makes fucking no sense at all. I don't know. It, it, you, you know, know what? Highway to Hell screams Robert Downey Jr. or screams uh, Tony Stark to me. Yeah. It just does. I, I don't hate it ACDC. Does. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, totally, I got what they played Iron Man. I don't even think it was in the movie. I think it was in the trailer. They used the song yeah. Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. It was in the trailer. And then at the very end of uh, the first Iron Man movie, they play part of War Pigs. Yeah. And then at some point, Tony Stark is seen with a Black Sabbath t-shirt, but that's it. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. You bastards. You know, that could also be a licensing thing. We don't know. Maybe the Black Sabbath might not have been willing to license the the songs to them to use in the films. Why they would do that, I, I have no idea. Well, but it's they also not the band. It, it it's the the, the company that owns yeah, the rights because there's, these, there's a bunch of suits that are in talking charge about, of those decisions. We're talking about the same <laughs> fucking record label that wouldn't pay the drummer when they wanted to do their last reunion tour before Ozzy went full fucking retarded. Right. You know what I mean? Like. They wanted to do last one, the last reunion tour, and they wouldn't pair. What's his name? Bill. Bill Ward. They Bill were concerned Ward, yeah. about his health. He does have failing. Right. Like, he has a heart issue. He, and you don't want to bank a fucking million dollar tour. But he on also. A guy with a bum ticker. But they wouldn't pay him. He was like, right. I want money. This is what I need to do. This we can make yeah. this happen, and they wouldn't pay him. You know who the fuck doesn't pay the original drummer and to he, come and play, dude? Like, like the most legendary rhythm alliance. I will, exactly. I'll say all day about Black Sabbath if you let me. You I think shouldn't. money has ruined the music industry and I don't want to say films are bad so don't 
get a whole bunch of fuck yous online. <laughs> but I think money has killed a lot of really good stuff. It always Money has. kills everything artistic. Mm-hmm. I like uh, the... Shaquille O'Neal, I saw an interview with him, and he was talking about, you know, he's he's done a lot of music, DJ, and, you know, he's involved with uh, rap albums and stuff. And they were like, you know, you could have had that career, like, you know, you didn't pursue that. And he's like, yeah, Zot, you know, my album will go platinum or, you know, make a million. It'll make a million dollars. I get $40,000. That just never added up to me. Like, I'm yeah, not right. to just keep this as something I get to have fun with. Right. A party. You know what I mean? Right. But and I also think, I think in regards to music, we're seeing the deterioration of that because like, you know, nowadays with Apple music and a laptop, you could make your own shit, produce it 100% yep. yourself and put it on up, up on Apple Music and you don't need a label. Right. The difference is, is that you can't go get a venue to sell out Fucking, you know, the fucking Gundarina. Is it the Gundarina anymore? Or is it the first energy stadium or whatever the fuck it is? Yeah, whatever the fuck. Yeah. yeah Anyways, yeah. You can't go sell out a stadium anymore without a record label. And I, you know what I mean? And that that is where they... Because now, if you even look, like my friend Brian, good friend of ours, Brian, is in, in a, a, metal, a, a local metal band from Sarasota. You're in a local metal band. Um, right. You know, Brian's dealing with, you know, they're baby national. People know who they are. They have fans all up and down the East Coast. They just went on a fucking three-week tour. You know what I mean? Like coming up through here and, and playing all these places. And like Brian said, it's... It's not about anymore about having a hit song or how many CDs you sold. He's like, whenever these A and R reps talk to us, it's about how many views do you have on YouTube, how many followers do you have on Twitter, how many followers do you have on your Facebook page, do you have a Facebook page, how many downloads have you had through your Apple account, oh my how God, many down- it legit, it legit how many matters, how many times have you played, how many times have you been played on Spotify, how many times you've been played on Pandora. These are the questions they want to know now, and it's like you are not going to get signed and be given the money to go do a full U.S. tour unless you meet those requirements. But as far as being able to produce music on your own, I think it's wide open. The oh, you can get a two hundred dollar laptop and like fucking rip some. You can pirate the program. So like, this, the I'm not lap- suggesting that you do. Actually, with, I am. Fucking with, take it. It's free. This laptop that we're recording this podcast on right now, GarageBand comes free. I can record your entire band and produce it professionally using this software. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the problem is, is that people don't want to make... They're not, I'm not going to say all people because there are some real artists out there, but most people don't want to make music to make art anymore. Most people want to make music to become famous. So yeah. they're, they want the record deal instead of just doing what they want to put it out there. That's why people like Trent Reznor, last night it's Nails thing, he put up online for fucking free. He made yeah. an album and said, fuck it. No, I'm not giving it to the record company. I'm giving it to all of you. You all get it for free. You know what I mean? He just said, screw it. I'm going to do my own thing. You can have it. You know what I mean? And that... I wish we'd see more of that. I wish people would realize that your art will make you famous. Just give it time. It, especially yeah. from people that have already made it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You like, know, how much fucking money do you want? There are very few true artists left. Yeah, I yeah. agree. You know, I love Five Finger Death Punch. One of my favorite favorite bands. I can agree with that. My favorite song, Jacqueline Hyde. My sav- second favorite song is the song they wrote about telling the record label to go fuck themselves. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And what they do? They wrote a song telling the record label to go fuck off. Right, but at the same time, whenever I wanted to get those tickets to go see Five Figure Death Punch in Tampa, it was $192 for nosebleed seats. Jesus yeah. Fuck. You know what I mean? So don't tell me you're saying fuck the record company and then charge me two hundred dollars to look at you through binoculars. That's you know true. I, mean? I didn't know that. You know, so I mean, it's it, I don't know. It's art today. I agree is suffering considerably. We don't see like we used to. Um, you know, movies. You don't see the movies as much. Like I remember the days even in the eighties, seventies, eighties, and nineties, dude. I mean, think about it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was an independent film. Yeah. A beautiful independent film. Star Wars was an independent movie. You know what I mean? You had creative people doing cool shit. Now it's like a, a company finds a formula, rinse and repeat. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one, one company I thought that was very on, on track. One second, let me finish this thought. Was very on track was, I think it was Blumhouse, I think it is. When they, they're the ones that did the remake of, they did the remake of uh, House on Haunted Hill. And then they did the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Then they did the remake of uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. 
Friday the 13th. Yeah. And they knocked them out of the park. They modernized them, still made really good, scary films. I really liked that House on Haunted House, Hill. House on Haunted Hill was fucking awesome. That was dude. a great movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, was fucking amazing. They oh, did a yeah. really Harley good Murray job of it. was the best casting choice. That Absolutely. Was so, it was so gritty and yeah. nasty. Like, it's gross. That's the thing about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is it just, it looked gross. And, like, and, the way they, the cinematography was like, they made every shot look fucking nasty. Yeah. Yes. Like, you didn't just tell, this is South Texas. You right. can smell everybody's fucking B.O. Well, if like, you think this about, was gross. <laughs> they also attempted to go with that whole fucking, uh, like, found footage idea. You yeah. know, it's very much so. Like, a lot of the promotion of that movie was, you know, in Texas. You know, this happened. Da, 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 and they tried to get the idea before the internet. You know, uh, what's his name? Toby... Tom um, Hooper. Tom uh, t- Yeah, yeah. Tobe Hooper. Tobe Hooper. He, he tried to do that whole found footage marketing scheme like Blair Witch Project did right. without the internet. So, like, I give the guy a lot of credit on that. And I'm so sorry. I totally interrupted you. What was your thought? Okay. So, I think that's why we're seeing a lot of high-named, like, I, I don't know else how to call it, stars, I guess is a better way to put it, in these low-budget films. Because they're, they're not stupid. That's their job. Their job is to act. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing a lot more of them doing these little low-budget you know, don't have a lot of credit behind them doing them. Mm-hmm. I agree. And you hear, you know, they'll do interviews. Why, why'd you do that? Because I I like this project. It's something I wanted to do. Right. Well, I think, too, some of that comes from the fact that you can make a living, a good living, acting for small budget films now with the things like Netflix and Amazon and these people that are making in-house films. Netflix makes great fucking movies. I love you know Netflix. What I mean? They make really good films. And you know what they don't have? All the overhead of marketing the shit out of it and putting it out to theaters and creating posters and creating all that stuff that you have to do before the release of film to get people out of their house to go see it at the movie theater. Yeah. They just drop it and say, here it is, watch it. You know what I mean? You're paying me fifty. You're paying us fifteen bucks a month right now. Guess what? You get this content, and like, well, that way, you, like, this is more pure because you crowdsource it. Yeah. So you answer only to the people that want it. Yeah. Like the people that want it go. I'm going to give you the money. So he doesn't have to go to producers who go. Well, can you put my kid sister in? Yeah. Or right. I, I fucked this girl last week in Hollywood, and I promised her a role. Like, yeah, they're right. like, there's a whole bunch of push and pull on it. Well, like, well, we can get Nabisco in there. Can you make some part of this? Like, right. where they're eating crackers all the time. Like, and you know what I mean? All this dumb shit ends up in your movie. Right. Well, I don't know if that played well to the church crowd. Well, I'm not fucking answering to you, exactly. assholes. Exactly. Exactly. They have. I'm gonna go see freedom. my fucking movie anyway. Yeah. You know. They have a lot more freedom. But I do agree with you. That's I think I agree 100%. And you can really, this goes back a step, but you can really tell a record label to go fuck yourself when you're already in a record label and making $200 a show. Yeah. Yeah, That's right. True. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't know. It's crazy, man. Yeah. So, yeah, since we're on the subject, of, we're still on the subject of movies, I think all of us agreed that Spider-Man Far From Home was awesome. We it all was loved amazing. It. Yeah, I'll legit. go see it again. Definitely go see it. We all loved it. Um, I, I and know we he, all agreed that Bob needs to go see Homecoming. Well, yeah, he can come over here and watch it. He's over at our house like four nights a week anyway, so yeah, one of these nights here. we'll just put it on. Um, let's talk a little bit about, I know you're very excited about the Three from Hell. Oh, yeah. Fuck, yeah. I went and looked at the cast, and uh, I am curious, above all the other things, that Chaz Bono is in this movie. Really? <laughs> like, wait, what? Interesting. Probably just a walk on because right. it wasn't in credit with the main cast. But uh, right. yeah, it's been since like 2000. Was that 2005? Yeah, 2000. That was like 2005 when the, t- the yeah, first one came out. 14 years. Because I went to see it with you. Yeah. So that's the only alarming thing about this is because it looks like it kind of comes out. Like, or it takes place, like, virtually after. Yeah, it looks like it takes place directly after the uh, after the last one. Um, it, it, The trailer that came out, like, they're showing them all shot up. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting that I picked up on in there is the difference between House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects was a lot. Like, one subtle thing about the House of a Thousand Corpses I really liked was there's kind of an cult thing mm-hmm. where like you had the whole Dr. Satan thing and yeah. I don't know if you ever did you ever go through the deleted scenes yeah yeah where there was that hospital scene where they got him in there and he fucking rips that woman's throat right and you're yeah like, he's still alive you know yeah exactly um 
where did that go? Devil's Rejects, all of a sudden, that's like not even yeah. a thing. And there's like a clip of when they're in the hospital because there's like a, we're giving them a million to one chance to live because they've been shot to fucking back. Right. But uh, humans are hardy creatures, man. People have survived all kinds of fucking shit. For every jack off that slips in a shower and breaks his neck, there's right. a guy whose shoot didn't open and he falls to the earth. He's like, <laughs> Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> He'll be okay. He's not okay right now. But so, yeah, it's it's unlikely, but it's possible these characters would continue to live. Right. But there's like the part where they show Otis, Bill Mosley's character. It said something like, how did they put it? Like s- s- satanic recovery. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, satanic what? like the power yeah. of Satan. He fucking managed to fend off like right. 43 bullet wounds. Like, all right, I'm but, back in. You right. know? Yeah. Now, see, I, I love Rob Zombie as a freaking director. Love freaking Halloween. So, we're talking about yesterday or the day before about what we're going to talk about on the podcast. And I'm like, you know what? I've never seen Devil's Rejects. I'll watch it. Well, last night we had dinner. I came home and fell asleep because I stuffed myself <laughs> like a fat pig. So, when I'm working today, I put it on. I made it through like... 30 minutes of it. It is a horrible B-rated film. Sorry, Rob Zombie. I love you. Give you praise. Right. That movie was fucking horrible. <laughs> you know what? I have to agree with her. I'm not a fan of that film. You didn't make it through the whole thing? I either. watched it. No, I watched okay. the whole thing, but I am not a fan of it because of the extreme differences between those two films. Like, House of a Thousand Corpses was a beautiful, stylized... It was it was, it was, a, it was a rock video. It was a yeah. wonderfully... He, he wasn't a movie director until he made that, and then he made that, and, yeah. like, he made it look like a rock video. Which it was a great. wonderfully stylized horror film that paid homage to, you know, to Hooper and, you know, Romero and all these great things. One of my favorite scenes ever in film history is in that movie. And it's when... Um, I can't think of the guy's name. Might have been Otis. I don't remember which one. But he shoots the cop. Oh yeah. And there's that scene where he shoots the sheriff, and the scene, the camera pans way out, and he goes in slow motion slow of the cop motion. flying backwards as his hat going fly. Fucking hat Slim Whitman. I'm like, dude, yeah. that was fucking. It was a beautiful scene, and I'm like, that movie was so good. And then I watch Devil's Rejects, and I'm like. Did he just hand the camera to a couple bums on the street and go say, go film these guys running around being idiots? Like, it was horrible. It was like this attempt at like a gritty grindhouse type thing. And I just, I hated it. I did not, I could not stand it. <laughs> Funny little Easter egg about uh, that scene. Well, not the cop, but the, the, like, the missing kid's dad shows up with the cop. Right. Did you notice? Did you know who that is? No, I didn't probably, I didn't catch it. I haven't watched it. Because they got him fucking time. dressed. Just like his role in Saving Private Ryan. It's Private Ryan. Like, no shit. he's like, he made it all the way through World War II, and then fucking Otis shoots him. Like, go back and look. <laughs> he's got the fucking blue jacket on from Saving Private Ryan with the little flag pin on there. And Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Wait, wasn't that, isn't that Matt Damon? Yeah, well, I mean, not Matt Damon, but the old guy in the oh, cemetery. Oh, okay. Was like, it was like, fucking Matt Damon. Totally lived movie. a good life. And like, yeah, and then he ends up getting shot by fucking Otis. Right, like, I right. don't know why I thought that was funny, but I think Rob was interviewed and he was like, yeah, he came to the casting call, was just looking for an old guy. And then the idea that was so fucking funny to me that right, I, yeah. I had to put it in my movie. Yeah. But some part of why that movie's better in some ways, and who knows what it looked like beforehand, but you know, he made it in like the late 90s, and mm-hmm. it didn't come out until like 2002, 2003. Yeah. So he had, and it was a whole bunch of studio nonsense, and then the, nobody wanted to put it out, he couldn't find a distributor or whatever. Right. But that gave him an additional few years to really trick that movie out. There's a whole bunch of scenes that make that movie a better right. experience because he had all of this fucking time to keep shooting scenes, keep adding animation, keep, you know, upping the quality of it. So mm-hmm. I, I would be curious to see what the first cut of it looked like. Right. But I, I, I do appreciate that more than the rest of his movies for sure. I, I think he has a problem, though, with that kind of stuff because, like, the same Halloween, his remake of Halloween is by far one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It oh, was really? amazing. His his the the fact that he focused so much on young Michael Myers and the whoever that blonde fucking oh, Dag. Yeah, kid I think that his he got name is Dag. He's is great. 
whoever that kid is fucking amazing and like the sheer brutality that is displayed in that film and like how good just how good the first the first 30 minutes of that movie is a new movie is a new story and then the rest of the movie is the original Halloween movie you know what I mean so it's like the first 30 minutes so that goes through like him and when he murders his family and like his descent and like all those things with him in the fucking mental hospital and like the masks and like it was so good and then Halloween 2 was complete fucking garbage you didn't like the hospital scene it was awful everything was horrible the whole fucking movie was terrible like it was just bad and like I, I think he has a problem with follow up like he has a great idea out the gate but trying to follow that story up with another really great film mm-hmm. I just think for some reason he falters I don't know why I don't know if it's short attention span or what but is it something that Curtis just said that he's got so many years to do the first one because nobody knows that's coming out and he pumps, pumps, pumps excuse me <laughs> are you having a seizure uh, maybe he pumps the second one out in three years and doesn't take that extra time to finish it off very well could be yeah it could be but I, I honestly I like Devil's Rejects and it. I I think it's a great movie. I just think he might have done better to like, I don't know, make it about something completely different because it's totally so. It is very different. Yeah, it's such a departure from that first one. Right, and I get the like, idea. What he's trying to do is follow these characters. He's trying to follow the psychotic family. You know what I mean? And like, what's left of them? You well, know what it's, I mean? it does a weird Clockwork Orange thing. Yeah, because you didn't make it to the end, but the idea was. Like like Clockwork Orange, they take the villain and they take the first half of the movie to make them the most despicable person ever. And then, once he's put through that treatment, you begin to feel a sympathy for him. Mm-hmm. And the villain in Devil's Rejects is a renegade cop. And he's so vicious and barbaric that you begin to, like, they become sympathetic characters. Right. Like, that's... That's a really crazy fucking story to try to tell, and I I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but it just didn't... I, I didn't want that from a sequel for House of a Thousand Corpses, right. which was just a splattery, crazy fucking drive-in movie right. of yeah. old. Yeah. And uh, he tried to give us that with 31, and if you made it through 30 minutes of Devil's Rejects, I, I would like to see... I would like to clock you on 31, because 31... Is an obnoxious piece of shit. I I hate this movie so much. And one of my things I've always been irritated by Rob Zombie movies, which is glaringly obvious in 31, is, and it seems hypocritical for me to say also, but why is every character just fucking screaming? Like, does he, (laughs) hold on, cut, cut, cut. You're not, why aren't you yelling these lines? Oh, I just thought I would emote, right. maybe. or to, No, I want you to yell. Everybody fucking yell. We're all going to yell through the whole fucking movie. Like, it's really annoying. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen 31 yet. We have neither of us. Okay, really well, yeah. It. Set the egg timer yeah. uh, for your kitchen and then see now, how is, long Is this it. the one that was basically the cannibal movie from the 70s? It's like the same movie. No, no, no. That's Green Inferno. Oh, that's, that's Green Inferno. That's Eli movie. Roth. Okay. I recommend you watch that too. I, okay. I fucking love that movie just because it was, that was, it was crazy. It right. Was stupid at certain points. But yeah. All right. 31. Don't watch out. the original because Cannibal Holocaust is just fucking gross. It's disturbing. I've seen it. I know. It's extremely yeah. disturbing. It's, it's just gross for the sake of being, being It's gross. like rape yeah. and then animal torture, rape yeah. and then animal torture. It's fucked up. Yeah. Eat some people. More rape, more animal torture. Right. Credits. I like know. 31 more than I like Cannibal Holocaust, if that okay. says anything. Well, that's a, that's not a very hard bar to get above. So, <laughs> um. so, so for those of you that aren't in the room, we've actually got Curtis sitting about three feet back from the microphone because he's that loud. He's that loud. <laughs> <laughs> All the rest of us are sitting on top of that and yeah. he's sitting in another room exactly now 31 i haven't seen now i did was a big fan of lords of salem which I don't, know, I don't know if you saw that one or not no we're gonna watch it though. okay definitely yeah that's a great movie that's i really enjoyed that film i thought rob zombie did a good job of it i think a lot of it too is i really like sherry or what's her name moon sherry moon zombie, sherry moon yeah. zombie. like like her portrayal of michael myers mother in halloween one was unbelievable like yeah. if, if that movie could have gotten an Oscar which in my opinion it should have because it was fucking amazing she deserved it you know what I mean like her portrayal of the the mom and the terrible relationship who loves her kids and then her son does this horrible thing and her trying to keep going back to the to the mental hospital to try to help him out and then when she sits there one day and sees the feral fucking insane animal he's become when he rips when he stabs that fucking nurse to death in the throat with a fork she just goes home and she shoots herself you know what i mean so like the descent of her from being this woman like trying to provide and help her family and trying to be there to just 
to the point of complete depression where she's like, I'm finished, I'm over it, I'm done, I can't do this anymore, like, was just beautiful. Like, she deserved, in my opinion, one of the best acting performances I've ever seen was her playing that role. So I'm a big fan of her, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a yeah. big fan of her, and I think she was a, she had a pretty big part in Lords of Salem, you yeah. know? So, like, I, I, I tend to like movies where she kind of is the center point, just because I think she's great at what she does. You know, House of a Thousand Corpses, she wasn't as much, but I loved her in House of a Thousand Corpses because she was just a, a giggling nut bag and that was just fucking fantastic right. like, <laughs> well I think that's the I think Lords of Salem is the best Rob Zombie movie in that way and it's a it's a departure yeah it's still a rock video yeah like the the way that they use imagery in it and it very uh striking uh cut scenes it absolutely craft something that you can you can turn the sound off and then just put a mix of your favorite music right. behind it and it still plays well. Yeah. But it with the sound up, you have a suspenseful movie and that's something that Rob Zombie doesn't craft with any of his movies. He tried really hard with those Halloween movies. Yeah. We, we the thing is we already already know how this is going to play out because right. it's almost the same exact story. Yeah. But with Lords of Salem, it was a great throwback to movies they used to make in the 60s that, that were very occult-minded, but right. suspenseful. Yeah. And he, he pulled that off. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it, man. I'm a big fan. So since we're on the subject of Rob Zombie and movies, I want to see you raise the hands of everybody who knew Rob Zombie was in, a voice in Guardian of the Galaxy. Oh. One and two. Yeah. Nope. You knew that? Yeah. I, I did not know see, that. See, I did not know that till today. She brought that up to me. Yeah. Are you fucking serious? I didn't know that. Nope, like, I had no. no idea. Yeah, he was the voice of Rav, Rav, Ravager Navigator on Yondu Spaceship. Yeah. No yeah, shit. the guy's a big fan. So yeah. I was like, that's cool. awesome. Right. I love the... I, Rob Zombie should just be in everything. Who knew he was... He's very, very artistic. Did mm. you know where he got his start in uh, no. entertainment? No. Mm-mm. He worked as an artist on Pee Wee's Playhouse. No shit. No shit. Yeah. That's awesome. How about that? That's yeah. fucking fantastic, man. Is that a collaboration or what? That is awesome, That's actually. Awesome. Fucking Rob well, Zombie. Well, then I'm, I guess I'm really glad that Pee Wee Herman, you know, went into that movie theater. So we now we have Rob Zombie movies. Yeah. Do you know that Pee Wee? Oh, we're back to porn. Do you know? The- you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna say right now. Fuck the cops that arrested him for jerking off in a porno theater. It's fucking Southern Florida. You don't. You have nothing else to fucking do. Do you know the, a- the movie theater that? he got arrested in is in the town I lived in for 20 years. In like, Sarasota? I, I remember that no theater fucks. being there whenever I lived. I would lived in, in Sarasota when uh, shortly after, I think. Might even been when that went down. But like there used to be, you remember uh, Dutch Valley down there by Golfgate? Yep. Right next door to it where the, the fucking Red Lobster is now? Yeah. used to be a fucking porn theater and that's where he got arrested. Like when I went to Sarasota High School I actually fucking found a book in the library that had Paul Rubin's name in it. He had, written, he, had, he had written his name okay, in the back so of his book. I love that so on, much. That's look, awesome. Look, look, he went to Sarasota look at High. Straight. You can. They had a porn theater. Well, yeah, but back you in the day. could not jerk off or do anything. So you're going to sit there for an hour or whatever with the fucking heart on. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had porn theaters were huge in this. There's a great movie I need to show you with uh, Emilio Estevez and Charlie and uh, Charlie Sheen called uh, X Rated, and it's about oh the two, Mitchell brothers. Yeah, about the Mitchell yeah. brothers in the '70s, like the guys who made Behind the Green Door, and like. It's porn theaters were huge in the seventies, man. They were big. Like people went to see adult movies at adult movie theaters. They wanted to keep you in the in the fucking seat after you've jerked off. Yeah, and they did. Like they made fucking legit. They made movies. legit movies, man. Like Behind the Green Door. Yes, ton of sex in it. Is a fucked up, crazy fucking movie, dude. If you've never seen it, it's fucking weird. Yeah. It's very weird. <laughs> but you know, and, and they made the Mitchell brothers came to fame too because they put what, what the fuck, Marilyn Chambers in it, who was a right. She, she was like a, a, a product. Play. She was, she a, was the uh, Ivory Snow. Girl. She was the Ivory Snow girl from commercials, and they convinced her to come do this porn film called Behind the Green Door, which made it blow up because that was the very first kind of amateur porn. When you think about it, there's a girl who doesn't do adult movies. That everybody knows who she is coming and doing adult movies. So it just drew people in. But that movie made tons of money, dude. And like, dude, it was so fucked up. It's got the weirdest hands free ejaculation scene ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, because it goes, and like, who knows why? Like, okay, the premise of the movie is these guys fucking sell this girl, which is frightening because, yeah. okay, then it's rape. But 
they there's a, a club, like an exclusive club of rich people where they go in and they watch a girl get deflowered by so many people. Yeah. And it gets crazy where there's just like the people on stage, there's like many different people come in and they every mouth on every part of her. Yeah. And then there's like fucking scary black dude comes in with a goddamn Pringles can for a dick <laughs> and he fucking goes after her. Then there's this weird scene where like she's got dicks just all over. There's just dicks <laughs> everywhere. There's guys on trapezes next to her. She's got everywhere she can put a dick, she's got a dick. Then it culminates in an ejaculation scene that is Hands free. There's no hands anywhere. This guy's dick, and as is ejaculating, hands free. It goes all trippy. It's like no, 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 no. You're like, well, wait a minute. What's happening? Did I? How is this? Who does this? And that was like '71. Yeah. Like before, skin flicks were just like, oh, it's a nudist colony, and you're seeing naked people play fucking volleyball. Volleyball. You know what I mean? Or they had to back in those days. Poor movies had to be. A documentary. Yeah. So you would watch like fist fucking, and then there's a guy in a lab coat with a chart going, see here, people have different tastes. You know what I mean? They had to make it look like it was an educational film. Yeah. But those guys started making movies that were like, they were spending real money, finding real actors, writing a fucking script for the first time. Right. Exactly. Didn't they do the, they did a version of the Ten Commandments, didn't they? Or something. That is fucking hilarious. I have that one. That. (laughs) And the I watch people that talk about the making of that and like it was just like fifty cooked up assholes yelling at each other. In the yeah, desert. like it was a terrible fucking. We don't even know how this movie got finished. Right, exactly. Because because Artie and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Uh, the, the Mitchell brothers were both pretty bad into blow at that time. <laughs> and then the one the one went off the rails, which I think is hilarious, played by Charlie Sheen. And the other one kind of settles down at some point. And then I believe one of them shoots the other one. Did they cover their nightclub? Like they had a fucking nightclub yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah, they cover all of it, dude. Hunter S. Thompson would used to talk about. It's it's it it so covers fucking crazy. I think it kind of starts at the nightclub time and then moves all the way through the making behind the green door and making all these movies and all this money <laughs> and all these X-rated theaters and all the people protesting them and then culminates in I believe the one brother shot the other one. Yeah, yeah, that's how it culminates. It finishes with that. But like, it was a great, great movie. Welcome Careful with that somebody. cocaine, kids. It doesn't make everything better. Yeah, you know? no, definitely not. <laughs> no. Definitely not. A little moderation there. Right. Watch it. Watch your. But intake. um, how did we get on the subject of fucking the Mitchell brothers and porn? Uh, Rob Zombie. Rob oh, Pee-wee. Zombie. Pee-wee. Oh, Pee-wee. That's, 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 that's what I gave him. And why they arrested him for jerking off in a porno theater. Yes. If so, you were jerking off in a showing the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, okay. Right. By all means, arrest him. But if you're in there with, like, fucking Nurse Nancy, I think that was the name of the movie he was yeah. jerking off to. Like, fuck you, cop. So Stop. I'm actually the one that derailed this one. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. It's okay. Yeah. No, it's totally fine. <laughs> it's absolutely totally fine. But, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that, that yeah, I, I lived in 20 years in the same town. Like, I remember that movie theater. It used to be right next to a Kenny Rogers chicken. There was the, the Dutch Valley restaurant, that movie theater, and Kenny Rogers chicken were right there I've in a row. I've never eaten at a Kenny Rogers roaster chicken. Is yeah. it any good? I don't think I've ever eaten there. Because I, we always went to KFC or Popeyes down there. Everybody goes Popeyes, to Popeyes, man. Badass. Popeyes is two piece and a biscuit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it has, it has gizzards, fried gizzards. Yep, two piece and a biscuit, dude, for like two ninety nine. Man, you can't beat that shit. But um, but yeah, no, I mean, now I want chicken. No, no, now I really I want, want fried, fried chicken gizzards. too. I want fried giblet chicken gravy. Oh, I uh, see. I am not a fan of giblets, man. I see, do not I like made it. giblet gravy for him I, one time, and he's like, "What the fuck is this nasty <laughs> shit?" And I'm like. <laughs> I'm not a fan, man. I'm just I not a fan. I can't believe that this boy was raised in Holmes County in yeah. the Chipotle gravy. I know. I'm, 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 I'm rare because, like, my whole family loves that shit. And yeah. I'm like, fuck you. Get the fuck away from me. I'd <laughs> I'm, rather, not, I'm I, right there with you. I'm I'd rather, not a Giblet fan. No, nope, exactly. Nope. I'd rather eat raw sewage, dude. You know what I mean? Like, it smells like raw sewage. Dude, I love fried gizzards. <laughs> I do. And I love Chipotle gravy. You got your real ass Southern gal. Oh, you did. dude. Dude, she loves. What a peach. I don't know, we have, we've been having a battle for fucking, what, 15 years yeah. now about boiled peanuts. Because oh, she peanuts. fucking loves boiled I've peanuts. I've never had them. Why boil them? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> it's it's amazing. Have you. Okay, what does a, have, I don't even know what it looks I'm like. I'm going to have to what make does a boil. One time. What does you it do what? to it? It makes it soft. Basically, it's it's the it's the world it's the 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 most solid form of crunchy peanut butter you can think of. Oh, because essentially it makes them soft to where you can chew them and bite into them. They're they're not hard, but it just it softens them up. I make mine uh, uh, peppery, so yeah, I they put spice like, them up. peppers and stuff in it, so it's spicy. Every gas but, station south of Tennessee, you get boiled peanuts at. Uh, you know what? He's never had them, so I get to make them for game night. Okay, you can time. make them, but I'm going to Cleveland for the weekend. <laughs> Why? Dude, like, okay, you can't so, in the house? So, like, when she makes those things, <laughs> yeah. I can only 
say that the, the smell is the equivalent of somebody boiling garbage in your house. It is not. Like, literally, like, they go out, she's like, she scooped a bunch of garbage out of the can, put it in a pot, and just boiled it. It's like somebody's making the world's worst kimchi. You know what I mean? Like, it's just fucking awful. I just, I personally, it's just a thing. I cannot stand the smell of boiled peanuts. They don't smell bad. What are we cooking in here, honey? Socks? Like, yeah, what's I happening? I come home from work, I'd be like, oh, motherfucker, you're making, because her, you know, the kids, they all loved them. I'm like, I come home and be like, motherfucker, I want to die. And boiled peanut. I would just go hang out in the garage and drink beer until the smell went away. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not a fan, so. Um, how the fuck did we get the boiled peanuts? Uh, we, we, like we, we, we went uh, off on a food routine. It was, it was Pee Wee. Pee Wee, Pee -wee got us oh, back to boiled Pee peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, the whole thing I wanted to, I just wanted to touch on, you know, the, the whole uh, Three from Hell thing. Because honestly, I'm not really that interested in seeing it. I'll watch it when it comes out on DVD. Just because I'm not so, I'm not a big fan of Devil's Rejects. So I, I probably won't see it. I mean, like if Sid Haig's in it and Bill Mosley. I'm like, I love those guys. So if you didn't get to, like, they're, they're, there's a really great series of exchanges between those two characters in Devil's Rejects if you're able to finish mm -hmm. it. And there's some really, really funny lines with those two. Yeah. Uh, but it, I, I look forward to seeing more of it in this movie. But they cast... Uh, and I don't know how he figures in. I didn't catch that in the trailer at all. But Richard Brake, who was starred in 31, and he was pretty fucking frightening in 31. It was just like everybody else right. yelling crazy shit. And <laughs> that's all 31 is, really. Yeah. It's, just, it's just crazy, crazy yelling. shit. Crazy yelling. Yeah, crazy yelling. And fucking just being nasty. Like, the gore in it isn't, like, played for effect. It's just there. And, yeah. and there's just buckets and buckets of it. Nice. And, and not in a campy way, like, where Sam Raimi would do it, your Evil Dead, where you're like, that's fucking hilarious. It's gotta be 100 gallons of blood. I, I don't know. It's just... Right. It's just dumb and obnoxious. Now, that's one movie I did really like, too, was the remake of Evil Dead. I yeah. thought they did a really good job what with that. What a good that. take, man. They, they could have ran with that and just retread. I loved that we had so much of homage to the to Ash. Like when she she it gets her, she cuts her hand off and she like crams the bloody stump into the handle of the chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. And it's like using them. And I'm like, that was a total homage to Ash. You know what I mean? I did read an article the other day that said that Raimi, uh, Bruce Campbell are both on board for they want to make they want to be part of they would totally be down for a fourth Evil Dead movie another Evil Dead movie but they want to actually help produce and write it for the new director that did the remake oh, okay. and have it done in his world because they're all like apparently that guy who made that movie it was his first movie and he like literally like yeah hit showed, a homer he, dude well he showed like he was he was like on the phone like probably blowing up Sam Raimi every day like dude I need you to come check this out like he worked very closely with like Raimi and Campbell Bruce Campbell about that because he's like dude this is something it's iconic i don't want to fuck with it you know what i mean like i want to make sure you guys are cool with what i'm doing you know what i mean so wow. like i think that's why that movie came out so amazing because he took a very serious take on it very much more the original evil dead film versus evil dead 2 where everything got goofy yeah. you know but um and i think that's why it came out so well but they both said yeah we'll put down but bruce campbell's like no i'm 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 no more ash i am finished i'm retired I'm not playing that character anymore. They need to recast it. Yeah, They're like we need, we need, we need a reboot of Ash, which I would love to see. I just don't know if any human being on the planet that could play Ash, because how the fuck? It's like trying to say somebody else can play Tony Stark, right? You know or at I mean? this point, like who else is Deadpool? Like, good fucking luck, you, you know? Right, exactly. Like who are you going to find to do that other than Ryan Reynolds? You know, he was born to play that fucking role, man. Um, you know what else I just watched too? I finished the other night. I, can't, I think you fell asleep, but I finished Jessica Jones. Oh, I'm only through season two, and I'm like, I'm still kind of struggling. Should yeah. I power through? I mean, season one was really good. Season one took a while to get started, and then the last half of that season was really good with Purple Man. Fucking, what's his name? David Tennant as Purple Man was just oh fucking amazing. God. Yeah. Season two, I really liked. It wasn't as good as season one, but it was still good. Season three was weird, man. Like, it's dark. It's very dark. They brought in Fool Killer um, as the villain, as Fool Killer. Okay. Um, they did a pretty good job with it, but they took Hellcat in, like, a crazy direction. And, like, she goes down the rabbit hole darkly, like, very dark and very crazy. And, like, it's... it's. I don't know if I'm happy with the way it ended or not. I mean, I, I like Jessica Jones. I was a comic I never read, so I don't know anything about the history here. I know who the characters are, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, there was a pretty cool cameo from from Luke Cage showed up in the last episode, which was kind of nice. Um, but 
I don't know. I'm on the fence. I haven't decided whether or not I liked it or not. It was decent. It wasn't terrible by any means. Right. But there was not enough. This one, I think they, they tried, it felt a lot more like the first season. It was a lot less of her being, showing off her powers and, and, and as action packed. Um, I do have to admit that the guy who plays the full killer uh, it, we did really good. Yes. I mean, they, they pulled this guy in. I saw, we saw him also in uh, Russian Doll. He played the guy that keeps restarting the night with her. Or no, not the guy that restarts the night. The guy she keeps fucking. Like, she, every time she if restarts, she fucks the same guy. If you have not seen Russian Doll, you have to. It's a Netflix series, and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it was great. It was really good. It's got what's her name in it. She was in Orange is the New Black. Uh, she was in a great movie called But I'm a Cheerleader from the 90s. That is just right. fantastic. Um, she is great in that Natasha movie. Natasha Lyon. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. She is absolutely amazing and, and that's a really good series. But he he plays like this guy that she meets at a party that she fucks like eight times because she keeps restarting the same day over and over again. And like that guy is who they got to play the fool killer. They got and Salinger. And like he does a really good job of playing a crazy person, like dark, twisted, super intelligent, Joker esque, without the funny, crazy person. So they did a really good job of that. Like I did like the villain a lot. I just thought it, the the, the storyline with Trish, which spoilers, more spoilers here, the storyline with Trish <laughs> and like Hellcat and where they send her just didn't make sense to me. But at the same time, I also thought it was strange because. A lot of this movie was about unmasking. Like, I, I'm going to go ahead and give you. Do you mind if I give it away? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so Trish becomes Hellcat, which right. is you know, which happens in the books, and like she's going around like dressed as this vigilante, and like she's doing all this stuff. And there's a lot of the series is about them trying to unmask her, which I thought was interesting considering the end of Spider-Man Three or Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, considering that stinger, and a lot of it was too about. How what the government is doing to people who are enhanced, and how terrified enhanced people are going are of going to the raft. Like there's a lot of that in there because like Luke Cage shows up and he's talking to her and because like Trish goes nuts and she starts killing people essentially and thinks that her superpower is the fact that she can kill these evil people and doesn't feel bad about it and like she goes nuts and just starts murdering people. Jesus. And like you know Luke Cage shows up and is like you got to go do something about this. You know what I mean? You need to go, Jessica, you got to go handle this. You know, like, you, I know you don't want to. I know it sucks. He's like, I did it with my brother, and I sent him to the worst place you could possibly send him, the raft. And then she's like, I don't want to send her to the raft. And there's this whole thing about how terrible the raft is. And I'm like, I don't remember the raft being that bad in the comics, dude. It's a, fucking, <laughs> it's a prison where they keep bad guys. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's not like, hey, we're going to put you in a hole in the ground with a fucking tar ass, dude. You know what I mean? Like, it's a fucking, just a prison for fucking mutants, dude. Like, I don't, I don't quite understand all that, but I thought it was interesting how they tied that in, the whole revealing their identity and like the unmasking of the superheroes. So I think that even though Netflix has unfortunately lost the rights to make more of these shows, which is why they all got canceled, they still worked with Marvel to continue the storyline. So it looks like I think Marvel's heading towards a very, very much of a we must unmask the su superhero story is I think where phase four is headed. Because like with what they did with Peter Parker, Dan, they unmasked him, which I don't know if that ever happened in the books. Oh, I've, it, it, that that happened. Uh, oh my God! Was that one of the things that didn't? At this point, I've got so many decades of comics in my head. I don't know that that. I happened. know Mysterio almost convinced him to do so. I know there was a whole run right. of books where Mysterio almost convinced him. Mysterio played a psychologist to Peter Parker and almost convinced him to reveal himself to the world, and he didn't. And, you know, but I don't remember any point where Peter Parker was revealed to the world like he was at the end of Far From uh, Far From Home. Right. So this is early on that that happened. Like, yeah. Uh oh, he doesn't even have like a. He's not even an adult yet. Like no. like Kevin Smith made. He's like he's like I can't wait for you know to see the the scene the, the the senior year of Spider Man movie. You know what I mean? Like him as a senior finishing up. You know, eventually he's gonna go to work right. for you know maybe that's where we start to work in the Green Goblin because he could go to work for Oscorp and all that shit. You know, and like. But Kevin Smith's like, we ain't going to get that now. That motherfucker, there ain't no way. You can't have a, a senior year Spider-Man movie. Everybody knows who the fuck he is. There's no way he can, he can't go back to school. He, he can't, can't work for the fucking he can't work. He can't work that for the That really Google. bothers me. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah, you know? exactly. So I'm curious where they're going to head with that. But That's one of my favorite Spider-Man parts in any of the movies is actually, is that three? I think it's Spider-Man three. Where like his life is crumbling away. It's the worst, lowest fucking moment. There's 
the love of his life up there with some asshole and Spider-Man astronaut. 2. Yeah. And Jay Jones over there going, Parker, take the picture. Yeah, he's, like, right, yeah. he's got to photograph it. Yeah, he's got to yeah. photograph the worst fucking thing exactly. you can think of. <laughs> Yeah, so dude. funny. I did. I did like the fact too that at the end that they brought back J.K. Simmons as as uh, oh, fucking. He's the best. Why would you Jay cast Jordan anybody Jameson. else? He looks like him. He sounds. Well, like did him. you notice too? They changed it a little bit. Like in in the in the McGuire movies, he's got kind of the flat top with the the Reed right. Richards well, kind of hair. You notice this, at he's the end bald of that, and like, they're making him, and this makes most the most sense. Like. Why wouldn't he be Alex Jones? Yeah, exactly. They're totally like he's fucking. They made him look like a fucking. Yeah. It's Daily Bugle. Tin foil hat. DailyBugle.com, and it's a fucking. It's a. It's a. Right. It's not a wet. It's not it a becomes Infowars.com. Exactly Basically, that. that's all it fucking is. Which I thought was great. You know right. what I mean? Like I thought that was really well done. I was very happy with it. You know, but um, but yeah. I, anyways, I was just talking about Jessica Jones and like. You know, I, I I wasn't particularly happy with the way they tied it up, but I also understand that. I bet Netflix probably isn't real happy either. You know what I mean? Like, they probably had plans to make these shows for a long time. And then Disney's like, nah, we're going to make our own service. Guess what? You can't do it anymore. Sorry. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, you know, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I don't think Disney would have made these movies, these TV shows right out the gate. Like, Netflix made them correct. You know I don't what, think though? Disney will make them this dark either. You know what, though? There has got to be a lot of pressure on Disney. I don't think they're going to be as good as they are now, but everybody's speculating that Disney's going to fuck them up really bad. I think if Disney fucks them up as bad as everybody thinks it is, they're going to get a foot up their ass from right. a lot of fucking nerds. Well, the problem is, is Disney makes Disney owns the world, so they don't care. You know what I mean? Because yeah, they may not. Okay, Where are you go? we didn't we didn't make any money off the off the Marvel TV show. So what? Because we made a billion dollars off Toy Story merchandise last month. You know what I mean? Like they don't care. See, I don't. I I I don't think Disney's that stupid. I don't know, dude. They fucked up Star Wars. That's true. They did. They fucked up Star Wars, dude. Hey, we'll see. We haven't gone to see the Last Jedi yet. Okay, the Force Awakens. They could fucking they could pull it out. They the could be a third. Like holy shit, they did it. <laughs> the Force Awakens looks like a YouTube movie. Looks like looks like somebody <laughs> looks like somebody filmed it on their iPhone and put it on YouTube. Why is the only person in that movie that's actually dead in real fucking life still alive? Yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Empire. Yeah, in, in uh, the Last Jedi, like, what the fuck? Yeah, they had a chance to kill her off twice, yeah. and they brought her. I'm like. What? Why? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it either. Like, The Last Jedi, I liked better than I liked Force Awakens. Still garbage. Um, and I think the only reason I liked it is because I got to see Luke in a fucking Jedi costume again. But uh, I, I don't know. And now they're you know, with the cackling thing with the rise of Skywalker. Now we're thinking, oh, okay, we're going to get the Emperor back. Like, really? You can't find a new fucking villain? You got to get the old one back? Like, well, fucking seriously? Yeah. What the fuck, dude? Like, come on. You know, you could have come up with a new villain and... I mean, I don't know. I think they're gonna Ray's gonna end up being a Skywalker. Everybody, I think everybody's figured that out. I think it's gotta be. Otherwise, who who else is Rise of Skywalker? I'm ready. I'm ready to solve that mystery. And, you know, and I hope it's not. I'm kind of ready for it to be over, to be honest with you. So one thing I am looking forward to with the Rise it's of just Skywalker. Put this to bed. It's Let's time for the Skywalker the saga universe. to be done. Yeah. Let's go make something new. There are Absolutely. a billion planets. Yes. Pick, some, pick another family. Let's go do something new. Let's see something brand new. A brand new story. I want to see I want to see Grey Jedi. I want to see something completely different. You know what I mean? I don't want to see the same light versus dark shit. I want to see something different. Which I thought they were headed to when they showed like Luke and fucking, or not Luke, but um, Ray and fucking Ben having like that connection, and then Kylo Ren and her having that weird connection where they could hear each other, and and I'm like, oh, maybe they're gonna go gray Jedi, maybe they're gonna go that thing where all oh, you know Jedi's have both light and dark, and then no, it's fucking what that big fucking goofy Snoke's yeah, like. I did it to fuck with you, da, 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 da. you know what I mean? And then they kill him, and it's over with. I'm like, what the fuck was that? Like, who the fuck writes that and thinks it's a good idea? Have you seen the? <laughs> The uh, leak photos or whatever they they're the perp on purpose. The Sith trooper. Yeah. So wait, like they haven't even explained what the Crimson Guard are, and there's a Sith. There's troopers, a Sith which trooper. Yeah. I don't fucking get it. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Well, most of what we're referencing is no longer canon because we've read all the fucking books, and right. the books just uh, those are good stories. Throw them away. Yeah, exactly. I know. Well, I mean, there's a whole. YouTube video I have to share with you guys where this guy breaks down The Last Jedi and like how bad fucking whatever his name was that filmed that just 
butt fucked that movie because <laughs> he was like J.J. Abrams. You know when he did Force Awakens, which I'm not a fan of, but he had story written for Snoke's and for why Ben and Ray, why Ray was able to use a lightsaber with zero training, why she was able to do a Jedi mind trick with zero training. Like he had all this shit written out, and the new guy came in and went. Eh, fuck all that. I'm going to do my own thing. You know, like, that's exactly what happened. He just said, fuck wow. all that shit. Through, like, Snokes was supposed to be characters that went through the whole fucking thing. And he just went and said, no, I'm going to kill him. I don't like him. Gone. And, like, just totally butt fucked the entire movie, dude. Like, that sucks. Yeah, dude. It's fucking that. I, I, I just want it to be over. <laughs> just make it over. <laughs> Give me something new. Make it <laughs> you over. Know? Just make it all go away. Make, make the bad man stop, please. Just make him stop. But I don't know, man. We'll see how it goes. So, oh, I know what else we want to touch on. We want to touch right. on a little bit. That's right. Lead us in, brother. It has been seven months since this group, minus a couple people, gathered around this table to embark on 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons. And for the most part, we really game consistently. And this is the longest stretch of just solid gaming that a lot of us have had in decades or some of us it's the first time yeah like me i didn't start playing dungeons and dragons until me and trent moved up here and we got invited over to curtis's house and i'm like holy fuck this thing's a lot of fun (laughs) it was really funny because when i was trying to explain to her what we did in dungeons and dragons she used to kind of look at me like i had three heads like your friends you you guys are all adults you all sit around together and pretend it's amazing. It's more than that. <laughs> Your eyes but just yeah. Over. It's like, oh, like, I've always loved comics. I'm a creative person. I love imagination. And I love strategy games. Yeah. But I couldn't. I guess it, I never played it, yeah. so I made a horrible judgment about it. Right, which is totally acceptable. People do it all the yeah. fucking time. But I'm having a lot of fun. I made a horrible judgment about Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and then I discovered right. fucking right. Brussels sprouts rule that is blasphemy. We have we have like ten bags of them in our freezer right now. We love those things. Yes, but yeah, no, no, it's totally understandable because I can totally see it from an outside perspective. And I have so much fun with it because it, I play barbarians, and I everybody asks me, you don't ever switch, you don't ever change. Well, I put a lot of myself into the character, so I am a. I'm afraid for you, Trent. Yeah. I'm a bitch. Let's just be, be afraid. Be very afraid. And I don't like people picking on my friends. Right. I never have, never will. Mom, close your ears. When <laughs> I was in high school, there was someone picking on one of my friends. I wanted him to stop. <laughs> he was a football player. He was a receiver. So what did I do? I broke his hand. <laughs> he never played football again, at least in high school. I don't know. That's my wife, it. folks. Mames people for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I get to put my whole comic book thing into it because all of, I mean, this is it. We play Starfinder 2. But my character's name is Brenda Banner. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of her backstory is she is a barbarian sage. And she didn't like the fact that she was a minotaur. So she went to the Azor Senate and she got this amulet that let her turn into this this beautiful, beautiful human-like figure. So I was like, oh my God, that's the fucking Hulk. So her name is Brenda Banner. And I'm just, I am having so much fun with it. And I am playing with, like, a great group of people. It has been fun. You know, I haven't played consistently. I mean, I played a lot when we were younger. And then I didn't really play at all after I moved to Florida because nobody down there plays Dungeons and Dragons. Everybody down there just shoots people and does meth. So it's like... And now meth gators. Yeah, meth gators. So it's like, you know, nobody really played. You know, I tried to find groups. I tried to find people, but there was nobody that really played. So I didn't play for almost 20 years. And it's like, I got to come back and then like we sat down and started playing and I forgot how much fucking fun it is. And like what we've done with this adventure has been great you know what i mean like we are we are truly writing a collective story together you know what i mean we've absolutely we've been doing a round robin dm thing you know i did the first leg bob did a leg tim's doing this leg right now and we've got this like story that we've all kind of written together that is just getting pretty fucking nuts man and it's it's been a blast man it's been a lot of fun i'm really enjoying it i i do admit 
I, 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 I get a little bit impatient, and I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm starting to get a little tired of playing Dorn. I'm tired of being the guy with the arrows. I want to do something different. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I love Brenda. You know, I just, I get to that point. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of at that point where I'm like, I want him to do something different. I think that's why I dual class as a rogue. Because I'm like, you know, number one, it fits Dorn really well. And then on top of it, it'll give me an opportunity to do it'll something It'll give you an different. opportunity to get the fuck out of danger when you get yeah, overwhelmed, my back friend. Back the fuck up. A half dragon grabs a hold of me and starts breathing on me. My God. Um, thanks, Bob. You're completely welcome. <laughs> His character now looks like a half melted can. I'm basically the hound. I'm essentially yeah. the hound now, yeah. You're the one that thought, I'm going to try and strangle him from behind. Didn't realize he was eight foot tall. Oh, yeah. If I, I would think I would have noticed a big hulking mass, but apparently he's very good at touching Yeah, that's your wings. fault that you didn't notice that he was eight foot tall. Uh, it's my fault I didn't notice he was eight foot tall with wings. The, per- like, <laughs> the perceptive <laughs> ranger. I guess, apparently. Chasing him through rooftop after rooftop. Didn't notice he was chasing the abomination. <laughs> so, All right. So, Trent had never DM'd a campaign before we we started this round robin thing. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, cool, we're going to have fun. The very first (laughs) thing he has to do is shave Hugo Barnaby's scrotum, which is Played by Curtis. Well, he didn't have to, but he, 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 you know, he realized that we're telling this story together, and it, it did play much better. That I will never. I was taken care that. of. Never. Yeah, I mean, we, I, luckily, you know, I wasn't going to go down the. I wasn't going to role play that part. You know, it was kind of like a large man shows shows up to uh, to shave you, and door closes, fade out, fade back in. It's a boot scene. Hugo feels. <laughs> Hugo feels freshly shorn. You know, like right. Now I'm ready to murder Hobo. How are you Let's liking? Go. How are you? How are you liking Hugo, man? But this is, you know, we're we're now. It's it, it's a really odd thing because Hugo is my second chance to play through. Kind of, it's not the same thing. I made it different, but uh, you know, the legendary characters that we're now kind of encountering as other characters starting out. Uh, I, you guys all played your characters up through twentieth level back in the day. Yeah. And as we discover these legends, the legendary character we're encountering now in Feywild uh, is a character that I didn't get to play above maybe 6th or 7th level. Really? So, yeah. So, it, it is perfectly uh, satisfying to, to get to do this with you know all of you again and in a way that kind of wraps that up for me. Right. And, uh, I I love this character. I love this group of characters. They they work so well together. Uh, Most now that of we've the time. eliminated some toxic. Yeah, that's true. Of it. Yeah. See, and Hugo has an infatuation with penises. Yeah, that's that's not true. They are funny. Yeah, they are. It's it's all just one running <laughs> continuous dick joke. You know. Right. I have a lot of illusory tricks, and quite a few of them have to do with dicks. It's yeah. just funny. Well, no, I think that's great because like. I, I'm not saying like personally you are but i think it's hilarious like obelisk of penises and <laughs> penises everywhere well I, I think it's great because like i during my my leg of that campaign it I, brings light to the campaign like by light i mean it makes it funny I, yeah it's exactly it's not so serious I, I think it's great the choices you're making cuz like i i during my leg of the campaign i created a, a dagger weapon called the dagger of follies which is this idea for a, a magical weapon i've been having going through my head for a while that like gives the user tons of bonuses and that kind of stuff by by taking away luck from other characters and when i gave you that and and you asked me if if you if cuz i attached it to your patron and made it your pack blade and all that kind of stuff and then i was like you asked me, you messaged me on Facebook, and we're like, am I lawful evil now, or am I am I an evil alignment? Am I chaotic evil? Evil? I said, no. I said, you're not, you're not evil. Your alignment didn't change. But I told you, you just feel like you need to make mischief. And you grabbed a hold of that and fucking ran with it, dude. It's <laughs> That's great. all I was waiting it's for. It's wonderful, man. I was like, you just feel like you just want to fuck with everyone a little bit. You know what I mean? You want to be mischievous. You're not evil, but you want to fuck with everyone. And boy, did you run with that shit, dude. It's great, man. I love all the crazy and shit. And we're there. Bob, have you... you your character is a cleric. Have you played a cleric before? There's not a character class that I haven't played, but I've been playing pretty regularly for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. You really haven't taken any breaks. Because at least I've never been in a group where you're uh, the cleric. And uh, I, I I like this, uh, but it's it's a it's a different spellcaster 
than you were used to playing in previous editions. Uh, and I have to admit that this Cleric of the Grave, I am absolutely loving Toll the Dead. I, j- just the amount of... Yeah, it's your thing. <laughs> the, the amount of emotion that you can evoke from it. Like, and every time I say it, I, I'm just picturing, you know, a ground pole for whom melt holes. Yeah, so, right. Exactly. So you, you, yeah, 100%. That ding and like the eyes start bleeding in the ears and fuck me, you know. Yeah. You know, he's also, you know, but you know, Aiden's also the tank. I mean, Brenda's a tank, but Aiden's tank too, the sequel. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, that guy is eating so much damn Dude, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Just staggered out with a fucking mug in his hand. And probably my favorite it. moment from last week was you know, we're, so we're, we're in Blix's domain and we're in this mansion. We find this door with six handles on it. And each one, every time we turn a handle and open the door, it opens to a different place. We found this thing that was like a, uh, um, it was the, um, well, well, not the, not a smoking room, the, uh, I can't think of the name of it now. Parlor. Parlor. Yeah, we found the parlor. We decided we're going to go down to the parlor and check it out. So we go in there. We walk into this giant empty room. There ain't shit in it except for two chairs and a fireplace. So Aiden runs up and sits down in the chair, which immediately triggers a trap because <laughs> he didn't let me check for traps. <laughs> immediately triggers I a trap. I checked for traps with my hit points. Yes, you checked for trap with your hit points, <laughs> which all of a sudden dropped like fucking 100 fucking undead, 100 skeletons in the room. 100 of them. Yeah. Fucking Aiden stands up and goes, turn, and half the room fell down. <laughs> it was fucking awesome. The, what's the fucking hilarious thing is the DM thought that that would fucking the DM forgot really be a test. Yeah, he didn't consider that Bob's a cleric. Timmy, and and the, the look on his face when I went, I turned on Dad. He's like, "How big of a room does that?" And I, if if you could see the table right now, there's still a circle drawn on the table yeah. of, of the shit that I can just like destroy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, he's yeah. like. And then Storm oh. Sunder took out a lot of them too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you threw you threw Storm Sunder and blew up like fucking twenty of them at once. I'm like, I'll I show was, you. I thought it was funny because after that after that happened after Bob does turn and like half the room fell down. Tim went rookie mistake. <laughs> it's like completely forgot there was a cleric in the group, <laughs> like, uh, and one that's high enough level that has turn undead. Like, <laughs> it was great, man. Like, I don't know, man. I think I think Tim is doing a spectacular job right now. I'm really happy yeah. with the storytelling he's done, man. He he really grabbed a hold of what I was shooting for when I initially laid like that overlying story arc in 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 the first campaign we ran um you know I'll tell you guys out there like my concept was I wanted to run the idea of Warehouse 13 if anybody's ever seen the show so the concept is is the game is very much like it's based in Ravnica it's you know we're searching for you know really high powered artifacts and the reason I did that is because it allows us to do any one-off we ever want to because it's like for some reason Tim can't be here we don't want to run the main story we just run, do a one-off to go get to go get some shit at least that's how it was then Tim took over and the whole fucking everything went crazy but like I'm really happy with like the overlying story arc that I laid in the ground there about people after something which Bob ran with you know this this dark force coming after these things and, and Bob ran with that with his murder mystery and added even more intrigue to it and then Tim just dropped the fucking hammer of Thor on us with this fucking League of Eye and all this fucking shit destroying Ravnica and now we're a thousand years in the future in Faerun and like it's just it's insane man I was yeah I was, and, and, and that honestly is I, I you know we haven't really role played that out Right. We haven't really role played that out because I I just the characters themselves this far in the game were all just kind of like, oh okay, all right, well we're gonna we're we're doing that. Yeah. But honestly, think about it, you're like, wait a minute, our world just vanished and everything we knew, all of our loved ones, everything we fucking knew in a way. Like we were prepared to go adventure and excitement, but nobody thought like, yeah, our entire world just got balled up and shoved up somebody's ass and that's right. it. Now we're in a world we didn't make and be, you know what I mean? Like, it's there. I, there's not that sense that this has affected us at all. You You're know? right, but I think some of that may come from the fact that I think the group kind of is expecting or hoping. Like the the, the way I've been playing it, the way I see it is, we're all expecting that we're going to be able to fix it. Right. There's going to be some way we're going to be able to fix it because we are a thousand years in the future. So what means that we can't go back a thousand and one year and stop all this from happening? You know what I mean? I truly love the adventure that Tim has laid out for us in the Feywild. My character, that dwarven cleric, is not happy. <laughs> he is not having a good time. And in the last adventure, he's like, you know, fuck it. Give me that Fey wine. I just don't want to think about this for the rest of the day. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I like the Feywild Adventure, too, because it's just crazy and out there. But it's also a little bit 
what's the word I'm looking for? Fru- it's very frustrating. Well, I yeah, he's he's never a huge know. LSD there. trip. He, but, yeah. he said it perfectly. We are on a fucking trip. Yeah. It, it's it's hard because there's no... Because it's the Feywild, and I think Tim's playing it beautifully. Like, I had nothing away from Tim. You I think, think so? I think, Tim is, I think Tim's doing it very well. Because I think in the Feywild, it would be very, very, very... very I don't know. Very up in the air kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's, but it, it, it's not... It's not grab bag. Um, things in Feywilds often aren't what they seem. Right. But they're... It's not... Everything is upside down. It's not a like Tex Avery cartoon. Right. This, this is very. And that's where I'm like, I'm getting like Alice in the Wonderland. Yeah. So, and just me, player, telling you, like, <laughs> honestly, Hugo doesn't know <clears throat> what to do in this situation because, like, this guy we're competing with, that the Tabaxi character is kind of like this guy, we pitted us yeah. against that guy, and he takes off. Like, that's a character that, like, is already established that my. Every one of my spells might as well be uh, Presto. Yeah. Digitation. Like, I don't have anything on this guy. Yeah. Like, I... So, it's very frustrating for me because I, I have a lot I can do. But I can't do anything with this guy. Right. So, well, I don't know how to play that. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's one of those things where you, you meet... You know, it's it, you, you meet you meet the bad guy. You're going to fight and beat. A little ways down the road, but right now you ain't got a fucking chance. You know what right. I mean? Ain't got a hope in hell. Yeah. So it's like he's having a hard time with that. Not right. I, I mean, really, but I am playing this character. It's like, how? Oh, what would I do? Like, yeah. what would I do? I'm finding how a little. I'm finding it a little frustrating just because it, it's very non-directional. Which you know, I, I I don't mind figuring things out, but like. Right. Throw me a bone. And like know? Bob said, like, wait a minute. Now we, we've lost our compass on this. Like, yeah. what, what, what is the priority here? What are we supposed to do? Right. Because this can go in a lot of directions, just specifically in Feywild. Because I've been fed a lot of breadcrumbs to get to this area. But overall, we have an, a, a mission to do that uh, somehow now became like six parts of one thing. Right. Which I, I don't know where the six parts thing came from because we were supposed to go to every temple and get something to help us fix or fight the oncoming evil. That was yes. yeah. something Kyrick told us. And now it's six parts and of now one it's thing. Six parts of one thing. <laughs> and I'm just like I, I'm not I don't know I don't know where it's going. And I think, you know, Tim when I, I talked to Tim after everybody left last week and he said he's been leaving clues for us all. So I think I think next I think Friday night, let's get out of the Feywild. And then I think the group needs to sit and have a conversation. And go through like your notes and sit down as characters, as our player characters, and try to figure things out. Because Tim told me he's been leaving us shit. The answer's in our notes. What's going on? I just don't know if we have good enough notes to know that or not. But I, I think I think it would be a good opportunity though to sit down as players and centralize what our goals are. Right. Like what are we doing? What is our plan? Let's come up with something to go forward with it. You know what I mean? Because right now it is kind of it's been very haphazard of one thing to the next. Like we haven't stopped since we got here. We went and visited your god, went there for a little bit, then it was on a boat in the ocean of fucking madness, then fucking got off the boat, slept, woke up, went to fate, went to Dark Sun, went to Faerun. We did pick Feyrune. up a paladin. We yeah. got a paladin. We picked up a paladin along the way, which we I got think, a super tank. All right. I think I think it's a great addition, he is man. So confused. Yeah, and you know, it's I, I, it's unfortunate that he picked the the kind of paladin he picked considering where we initially started into. You know what I mean? Cuz right. like we're in the Fey Wild, we have to do shit in the Fey Wild and he's somebody that his thing is to turn Fey. Right. Which you know, will make his head explode if he tries that in the Fey Wild. But I well, do I, it's I, worth a try. I do like Ben. And, and we yeah. had a rogue, lost a rogue, got a rogue back, kind of. Yeah. I, I right. like I like Ben, and I, I like the addition of Jonas. I like the way he's playing the paladin. Um, but yeah, I'm ready for a little bit of role play. Like I, I'm ready for us to get to a point to, okay, let's breathe, let's resupply, let's go to a city for a little bit. Like this this nonstop adventure combat, adventure combat, adventure combat is is you know I, I'm ready for us to get back to a city for an evening or so. Yeah, you know. At, yeah. at one point we was up for almost 36. hours. Yeah, almost 36 yeah. hours. Our character didn't sleep. You know what I mean? Like you was a creature of comfort, man. He didn't yeah. like put out like that. Exactly. I mean, well, you you said <laughs> unless he's, you know, in an altered state. Like that's fine. Right. If we went any longer, we would have to start making um what was constitution, it? constitution checks. Constitution checks, yeah. Yeah. You and know, my I, character was all for just get me out of the Feywild. I'll stay up. I can make them. Right. I'll, I'll drag the rest of you through kicking and screaming, but come on. I I, I, I am curious to see uh 
I'm sorry. I, I just no. Talked it's okay. Right go ahead. Go ahead. No, go right ahead, man. Because we uh, we we uncovered some artifacts. I don't remember what you got, but I know Brenda got that gauntlet that can do. Yeah. Well, uh, Tim said the only. We were outside talking. He said the only thing he's gonna let me do with it is the grappling hook. So basically, he's he's toning down Havoc Battle Forge's gauntlet. So uh, to just to everybody out there listening. So basically, what Tim has done is, you know, I've been playing. The D and D with Tim and Bob and Kurt and these guys for a long time and a long back twenty years ago we had multiple legendary characters we created um, and and Tim has woven things and possessions and history and lore from those characters into this current campaign so like that's why when I say Havoc Battle Forge that was a a, a a tinker gnome of mine that fucking created this crazy gauntlet that would like fire shit and like it was very scorpion esque um, and, and Tim said you're going to be able to keep the scorpion esque thing. Which I think is great with the fucking. He super- was a murderer. And, and sorry about your draconian, Bob. <laughs> it's funny that I ended up with that gauntlet because my god happens to be his old character. Yeah, yeah. Like she is, she has decided to take, become a cleric of, of Sabre. So I'm kind of dual classed. Yeah. Swinging for the fences. Not I think even a that's got to be like swinging for the fences. You now have a holy symbol that is one of his belongings. It's an artifact. Right. Well, yeah. true, well, like that didn't belong to Sabric. The gauntlet belonged to Havoc Battle Forge, which oh, was. I thought it was Sabric. No, was Sabric. Sabric, Sabric had a staff. Of Sabric? Or, no. So no. Havoc Battle Forge was just a completely different character I played that Tim decided to throw the gauntlet in the League of Seekers. For whatever reason. Oh, okay. You know, it's just I would, completely separate as I understood character. It. All no, right. no, but I think I think it's gonna be really interesting. Like I, I told Tim I was gonna try to sit down and help him write it. I haven't had a chance yet. It's gonna be a while before you level up to level two a cleric. So like and which by the way, does anybody know how that works real quick? Like so if I'm level one rogue, do right. I still have to get level sevens worth of or level eights worth yes. of experience points to level up my rogue? Because it's based on character level. Okay. So I won't be able to level my rogue up till two until I hit technically what would be level eight in experience. Correct. I should have done this back at five, man. I'd be be a much better spot right now. But um, no, I, I think it's gonna be interesting because I told Tim I would sit down and help him. Like, I want to write the domain of souls because Car- Sabric was all about using the power of the soul. It was my very he's first character. Very, I found out a very dark character. Yeah, he, he's very much. He, he was. He was evil, but like he was very much based on. He it's very much based on Shang Tsung. I've talked about him before on this podcast, and like he would take souls and use them to to power his his spells and what he was doing. So I told Tim, I'm like, let's write the domain of fucking souls, dude. Let's write a homebrew domain that's all about using the power of soul to do your spells and do whatnot. You know, so I'm pretty excited about that. And like, you know, it's it's gonna be fun. I've never homebrewed something like that before. And well, I'm it, having a blast. At first I was like, oh my God, I wanted to play a cleric. And then I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm doing something that's never been fucking done. So you know what? Fuck y'all. Y'all gonna sit here and be patient. Exactly. You know, and Tim gave you a healing spell. Yeah. You know, because I was a little concerned about that. Like initially when we came when we talked about it, I'm like, you should be a cleric of Sabre, since he's the one that took away your Minotaur side. You'd you'd feel he's your savior. And then I started thinking about it after I told her that, and she was all about it. And I'm like, Saber girl really didn't do a whole lot of healing, <laughs> you know? But I, like, I was telling Tim, though, when I talked about it, I'm like, but being a cleric, just because Saber didn't do healing doesn't mean that you couldn't gain healing abilities by being a cleric. Cleric is your your religion, you know what I mean? You're, just because your god is evil doesn't mean it won't let you heal. You know what I mean? Saber was allowed that luxury of not being a healer because we had Durak. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, we didn't need Sabric to be a healer. Sabric basically was more necromancer than he was cleric. It was just in second edition. They didn't have anything that represented a necromancer, so we made him a dark cleric. But basically, he was a necromancer. He'd play with people's souls, save them out of their bodies. I got a soul, yay. You know, so you'll be able to do stuff like that. Like the dying light spell Tim gave you, I thought was really cool because it, it, unfortunately, it takes it from the group. But like we were, me and him were talking, eventually that will level up to where she'll be able to target an enemy siphon hit points and give them to somebody else. Well, I like which that. Which that's fucking cool, dude. You yes. know, if you think about that, that's pretty badass. So. Yeah, I had an opportunity. Uh, Hugo, uh, his fourth level spell, it could have been Vampiric Touch, which is, is that. Right. But I ain't giving it. Nobody's well, you, is me. Well, <laughs> I'm, just, yeah, that's what you're I'm taking it for me. You take it for you. Yeah. But I, I've done, I've, I've tried really hard because, oh my God, Warlock has... The, the spell selection that's in there is so much wicked fun. Right. But I've tried to make my spell selections Hugo centric. Right. And, and when I think of Hugo, I don't think like, no, that's 
that wouldn't be something. You know what I mean? That doesn't play to my character. And it's I, hard to because there's so many fucking awesome stuff. When I think of Hugo, I think of Carnival Barker. Like, I really yes. do. You know, he's just, step right up. Step right up. Try your, you know, that's just what I think of when I think about him, you know? You know. See, the amazing bearded lady. And there was an exchange. <laughs> I don't have a beard, by the There was an exchange at one point where you were like, everything was going fucking sideways. And you're like, Hugo, magic is out of here. And you go, my character, I was like, Dude, I don't, you know, I got magic. It's just tricks. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is his take. Yeah. He does have, and especially now, like, the spells I did choose are powerful. Yeah. But they're they're not, like, wicked. Right. Like, you'd imagine, like, a, a warlock would, and can, uh, to great effect. So, and it, it is very tempting. I know that we'll roll up characters in the future, but I could just keep on rolling uh, warlocks up and make a different one every time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in doing something different next time. Like, I really, I like this wild magic sorcerer, but I've never played straight magic users very well. I'm just, it's just not in my nature. You want a, like a melee character? You know, I, I'm very much more melee or DPS. So I'm going to try it. I, I want to try it and see if I can make it work just because I want to play him in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, which is, you know, where fucking wild magic I just see goes you nuts. would have a Either blast of a warlock. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Hexblade warlocks. Yeah. Like you look at a Hexblade warlock, which, and with a feat like Warcaster and, and combined. You would never have to let go of your sword and shield or right. whichever weapon that you would you would outfit yourself with. And holy shit, Trent, I think you'd be that'd be right up your alley because right. you get a little bit of both. Right. You know, that's a total hybrid class. I also thought about and I know this is going to astonish everyone, but I thought about checking out a bard in fifth edition. And you should. I hate bards. But everything I'm reading online. And everything, all these videos I'm watching are saying bards are fucking awesome in 5th edition. Like, apparently, they fucking turn this class into fucking amazing. I love this spell. Look up look up the cantrip Vicious Mockery. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's all you need to look up right there to know how much fucking fun this is going to be. Right, yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. I, I, as a DM, I would fully expect you to have a different rip. I mean, I don't care... How you know? I mean, if it's your mama joke, yeah, then, right. Even then, you know what I mean, right? I don't care. I would expect you every time to come up with something cool, yeah. And you could, yeah, you absolutely. Do. Oh yeah, I can insult with the best of them. Some that. part of this is prep work on that too. Like the bard's as much fun as as, <laughs> as you can make it, but you do have to do a little bit of prep work. And Brenda found that out where clerics are concerned this week when yeah. we asked for a prayer, and you were like. Ah, Wait, <laughs> I didn't fucking look into this. Like, I didn't. Yeah, I, I hope that is something because you can totally but, have fun with that. Yeah, actually, me and Tim were talking outside and he's like, because I'm not an actor at all. I'm the type of person, I will tell you how it is. I don't sugarcoat it, just whatever. And Tim's like, so just when you go to pray, say, listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was, he seriously. Because that's how you would do yeah. it. Yeah. And I believe that's how a barbarian would fucking right. do it. He, yeah. he seriously told yeah. her, he's like, talk to her like Brenda would talk to Sabrick. It's Brenda talking to Sabrick. He's, he's like, don't worry about the, the, the all the other shit everybody else is saying. He's like, how would Brenda talk to Sabrick? He's like, if you got to say, listen here, motherfucker, I need some help. Say, listen here, motherfucker, I need some help. You know what I mean? Like, just, just treat it that way. So she's going to put her total own spin on it and go with it. What I'm looking forward to seeing how you play a cleric because, honest to God, I want to play a wizard in 5th edition just to see what I can do with it. Right. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, Bob is... Bob, uh, let me tell you what. Like, I don't know if you read my class tier selection. Like, I think wizard is so such a sexy choice. Especially in 5th edition. There's so much you can fucking do with that class. Right. And the spells, and I mean right from the get-go, you have access to a crazy amount of spells. And you're not even limited by it. You look at how many of those spells have the ritual facet to it, which means you're not limited in that at all. You can cast that motherfucker all day. Mm -hmm. And I know you, when you put the fucking prep work in and Bob starts preparing scrolls yeah. and his spell lists come out, he will be nigh unfuck withable. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I as agree. a DM... That makes me fucking like squirm a little bit because I'm like, how do I fucking make that interesting? Where isn't Bob walking in the room and going, nope, not today. Like whatever <laughs> challenge that you had, I know how. That's we what that. a wizard can do. I know how we make that interesting. The adventure where Bob plays a wizard in fifth edition will be Tomb of Horrors. That's how we make it interesting because nobody gets through that a lot. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Get your butthole stretched. I don't there. care that's how prepared you are, motherfucker. That's Tomb of Horrors. <laughs> like, I have twice, and it was as a wizard. <laughs> 
fuck you, Bob. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, anyways, I think it's a good place to stop, yeah. man. We're oh, all pretty oh. neat. Oh, what do you have to say? So, if you guys want to keep updated on what's going on with us, don't forget to check us out on Twitter at First Table Gaming. Yeah, it's at First TBL Gaming. Exactly. Um, what? Me? <laughs> what you want me to do? At Oh, you want me to talk about my Twitter handle? Oh, yeah. It can be found on the website. It's uh, You can also go to firsttablegaming.com. And uh, my Twitter handle is at Tilted Simeon. That's where you can find me. Um, I try to share as much as I can from uh, First Table Gaming as well. Uh, it's actually, I'm at Tilted Simeon FTG. I changed that today. So Okay. And if you want to keep updated on my silly fun facts, every <laughs> day I post one fact about comics and one fact about gaming dungeons dragons pictures about what we got going on you can find me at stormy ftg cool right on kurt uh, what's yours you can find all of my info on my about me section as well and uh, my twitter handle is destroyer kurt destroyer kurt that's fucking fantastic <laughs> bob didn't you just finally get a twitter account I did. You're tweeting. I, Look at you. But I haven't changed my. I haven't actually like set up my. It's okay. Still, well, it's, still, it's still just my name. One day, Bob will tweet. So tonight, <laughs> tonight <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get him we'll figured get, out. We'll get him figured out, and we will get him all set up and going. But you can find all of that information on the website. So firsttablegaming.com, where you were watching and listening to the podcast. All of us have profiles on there that have connections to all our social accounts. So yes. and you can follow the first table gaming social accounts there too. So that's enough shameless fucking promotion. Right on. It was a good episode, man. Absolutely. Awesome. I'm pretty happy. Nerd with out. It. Definitely. Later, nerds. Out. What was it that CJ said the other day? Suck it, nerd. I want to live a full life. Yep. <laughs> well, that's it for this installment of the Lunatic Parade podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to middle aged white guys shoot their mouth off about nerdy crap. See you next week. <laughs>